Jacob Knappmann has unquestionably had one of the greatest careers in the eSport of Rocket League, and yet still seems to remain somewhat underrated in the public eye. After watching an excellent video on Turbo Pulsar, I looked for a similar documentary on G2's greatest player, but couldn't find anything which is what led to this video. While as far as we can tell his career isn't yet over, we tend to only give the legends of our scene their flowers once they have retired, and I thought it would be cool to leave this as an open story of all the incredible things that could come next. What follows is our ten-chapter story, split up by years and tournaments, about one of the greatest to ever grace the pitch of Rocket League. Our first chapter is composed of the first two years of a newly emerging star's career. In his first ever YouTube video uploaded in August of 2015, we see a lot of what most of us look like when we first start out in Rocket League. Camera shake, plenty of whiffs, and not a single aerial to be found. But what's different from common players like myself is that just seven months later, he would be competing in his first weekly tournaments after joining Team Forsaken in March of 2016. While there is no footage from his first months on the scene, it is obvious he was already competing and producing results. We get our first glimpse into his play from a game he uploaded to YouTube in late April of 2016, where he competed on a team called Checkmate, with friends Tuster56 and Nap. The tournament was Rocket Royale North America, a large tournament that had multiple weeks of qualifiers where anyone could sign up to compete for a spot. This is the first time JNAPS would beat an actual eSport organization and a well-known one at that, Team Orbit, composed of well-known names like Zane Jackie and Gino Cop. Following his newfound victory, JNAPS would spend a short time on Team Lucky Bounce before joining Momentum. It is here that JNAPS would start to find continued success and break into the newly created RLCS scene by winning six out of the next eight tournaments he competed in, including a first place at a B-tier event, called the Pulsar Premier League Season 3, where he took home $600 in prize money. After getting first place in groups at the Pulsar Premier League, eSport organization Selfless Gaming would acquire the roster. What the public didn't know at the time, however, is JNAPS had gotten the attention of G2's Cronovi and was in talks behind the scenes to create a new G2 roster. After an incredible RLCS Season 1 victory, the roster had stagnated and fell all the way to 7th place in the regular season, not even giving them a chance to make worlds. Wanting a fresh start for Season 3, Cronovi reached out to JNAPS and told him to quote, find a third player of his choice. This took JNAPS by surprise, who like many of the early players at the time, was partially inspired to start playing the game because of Cronovi. So with his new teammate and infinite options, JNAPS would reach out and end up signing Dylan Rizzo, a popular streamer and centerpiece of the Team Take 3, who had finished fourth at the most recent RLCS. With a brand new team and plenty of opportunities ahead, JNAPS entered 2017 and RLCS Season 3 with plans of success, and that's exactly what he would get. With the new roster sorted out, G2 began competing in small tournaments to prepare for the upcoming RLCS season. While they aren't as popular in the modern RLCS, monthly and weekly tournaments used to be the main testing grounds for teams and would show if this new G2 team had potential. Potential was an understatement. The team would go on to win four monthly tournaments and JNAPS was showing our first sign of what was to come. Pushed in towards the goal, Kenobi went for a redirect but actually pushed it completely away from the goal. He knew that a player was going to get the block so he just wanted to keep him on. Oh! It pays off! It pays off because it allows JNAPS wow. to come in and get this pass. Kronovi, he denies no the clear way. and puts it off the wall right to JNAPS who pounds. All of this was for one goal though, the RLCS Season 3 Championship. G2 would easily win their way through the qualification to reach league play and now had seven regular season weeks in North America to prove they were ready to face the rest of the world. Monthlies were one thing, but the RLCS would be a different beast especially with JNAPS having very limited previous experience in such high-stake moments. Being in RLCS for the first time is hard enough, but teaming with Crow put massive pressure on the roster to perform well. And to start, they certainly did perform, with an undefeated start going 4 and oh, G2 even exceeded their own expectations. This even included what many considered the best RLCS series of the season when they pulled off a reverse sweep in Week 1.
The series was won by JNAPS in Game 5 over Time 2, with one of the nastiest fakes you'll ever see. Huge game here for both of these teams, and as you mentioned earlier, whoever loses this, this might be a mental landmine. Oh, JNAPS! JNAPS! And then the bump puts that one into the net. What a great block! JNAPS! He just destroys the mind of Matt! And look at that, he delays it and blocks him! Now, G2 would just need to win one of their two final matches during the regular season to place top two and automatically make the world championship. Sadly, G2 would lose to both Genesis and NA powerhouse NRG, which meant they would now have to win during the playoffs to reach Worlds. Still, third was a massive accomplishment for a team with a brand new roster, and they would only have to beat sixth seed Denial Esports to reach international competition. G2 had already swept them during league play as well, so it was about as close to a decided series as you can get. Win and in, the season all boiled down to this series. An incredible series, Denial starting out, going up 2-0, G2 clawing back, everyone's like, all right, G2's done, but they fought, and they fought hard, especially JNAPS, but ultimately, Denial able to close it down. One of the most important games, I thought, was game number two. Uh, Denial won that game 4-1, to one, but Kronovi, three extremely weird mistakes and right here he just completely misses a ball where he has enough boost to go grab that three mistakes three goals it cost him the game in game two and then go into oh. game five and the shot from left here the airstrike i like to call it <laughs> beautiful shot there but but denial's offense was looking great and then we go to game five sad jr's controller disconnects it's a 2v3 <laughs> for a little while and then Denial tied that game, and then Seg gets the overtime winner yes. on keyboard mouse. Then the demo plays at the end where Lethemir seals the deal there with that goal, and then the yeah. one off the wall. And Denial, a team that no one thought would win this series, every Twitter poll I was seeing was like 90% yeah. G2, 10% Denial. And Sad Jr. ties up the all-time record with Kronovi, 3-3, three to three, and the most important series ever for him. Yeah. He must be so happy. Third time going back now. Absolute heartbreak for G2. Three yeah. chances during the league, uh, the league play, during the regular season, for them to just win and get in, and they failed to do it. You mentioned this might be one of the biggest collapses uh, in RLCS, only S since second to G2 yeah, from much. last season. Heartbreak is right. G2 had tried and failed three straight times in a row, when all it would have taken is a single win. Calling it a successful season for Jay Naps as an individual would be a great understatement, being top two in both assists and saves during his first season. Rocket League is a team game though, and all that was talked about was G2's massive failure to finish the season. Even worse, was JNAP's previous team Selfless Gaming had placed top three and qualified without him. Understandably, JNAP's was frustrated, that's why when team The Muffin Men composed of players Squishy Muffins and Torment reached out to JNAP's about potentially becoming a team, he accepted. Yes, you heard that right, JNAP's joined soon to be NA powerhouse Cloud9. Yet much to his dismay, G2 had other plans in mind and would block his transfer because of his current contract. The team that could have been, out of options and his back against the wall, JNAPS did the one thing he was best at, playing Rocket League. He wouldn't immediately see the level of success he was used to, however, only winning one B-tier tournament and losing both A-tier events to his previous teams of Selfless Gaming and the Muffin Men. It seemed like JNAPS had took a gamble and lost big. As September approached, RLCS Season 4 had to go differently for G2. JNAPS wasn't the only one with major pressure. Kronovi had won the Season 1 championship and hadn't been back, while Rizzo had left a top 4 RLCS team to join G2. Failure was not an option. The squad showed no signs of slowing down when the season started, finishing Week 4 at an impressive 4-1. Finally beating Cloud 9-3-1 was a great hurdle to finally clear too. One wide. And again, that was about the most. That was the, that was the largest number of consecutive touches we've seen here. G2 finally able to put it through on the drop there from Rizzo. Kronovi strikes. Trying to watch what happened. Torment coming up and gimmick. Neither going for the first contest, but that drop down from Rizzo out of this world. However, just like last season, they had to perform well down the stretch. And to finish top two, they would need to win both of their final games. Their first match was an easy one, sweeping 7th seed ALG, yet to close out the day we were about to see the ultimate test for G2. Fellow 5-1 and one team Ghost Gaming, winner was automatically into the World Championship, while the loser had to go through the Regional Championship bracket. If last year's pressure had made G2 choke, this was going to be a new level. 
While after the series started it seemed that the pressure wasn't getting to them, Ghost was a great team, and even with this amazing JNAP's double tap. Will be G2 Rizzo on that wall. He has had some difficulties there in the past, but this time he comes out solid. There's the shot, the double tap there from JNAP's. We are all tied up one game apiece. JNAP's can't find the goal the first time or the second time, but the third time he'll make it count, just following up his own in and pinching it in. G2 tying up. It was all tied up heading into game five. With the entire season on the line, the whole team would combine to score the final goal of the series. It's got Kronobi to aim for. Kronobi gets the angle off the post, the follow-up from Rizzo, but Lefemir plays the ball, gets the save. There's the demo! Shaynaps with the goal, but that demo could mean that! All the things for G2 to go right there. First touch from Kronobi draws two across from the defense. With a 6-1 and one finish, Jnaps had finally done it. The world stage was going to witness G2. He would also deservingly win the NA MVP and had the team accomplishment to go along with it this time. G2 would finish the playoffs in fourth and Kronovi would say, we didn't care about seeding, making it apparent they were just focused on worlds and didn't care who they had to beat to take first place. With everyone eating good and J Knapp's long thumbs, G2 entered as the NA fourth seed and prepared for their first match against the Chiefs. J Knapp's first world championship would start out hot, taking down the Chiefs in a 3-2 series, where the entire team would combine for a great series, with the lowest-rated player on the team having a .93. Although their upper-quarter final match would go poorly, having a close series was actually a very positive sign, because Gale Force were the favourites to win it all. Dropping to the lower bracket would just make things harder, though, and their first opponent was a very good one. Mocket Esports, the second-place team from last year's World Championship, the roster was different, but they still finished as third in EU and were led by RLCS legend Fairy Peak. After a back-and-forth battle, the series would head to Game 5, and the season was on the line for G2. Another corner. Fairy Peak to follow as well. Jnaps dropping oh, Rizzo. Shot my God. Through G2's up. Coming off the wall, Jnaps will be there first, and Rizzo will chase. It's out of the corner. Jnaps is there to put the shot on net. Nobody's <laughs> home. Puts it through. G2's up. The other way to transition, just keep the ball on the ceiling. Rizzo now, hold on to it out at midfield. Ricky shadowing in an interesting oh. position, not where you want to be. We've seen one buzzer beater already this series. Could we have another one for Mocket? Send us to overtime. Pernovi shot towards net, just oh. goes straight in. Not bad for a team that finished fifth in NA the previous season. G2 would go on to beat PSG before losing to fellow NA team Cloud9 because of this unfortunate goal in Game 5. Coming from G2, utilizing oh. that backcourt so, so well. Gimmick to get it away. Cloud9 looking for the counterattack. He's going to place it down. Squishy's there, puts it back and in. What an angle from Squishy as Cloud9 takes the lead. Which would send them home at fourth place in the world. Fourth place back then wasn't quite the achievement it is today because of the reduced number of teams but it showed the roster had potential to win it all. That Gale Force team they battled with would go on to have the most dominant tournament win in all of RLCS history as well, showing they were only losing to very good rosters. To end the year, there was going to be one more major tournament, the E-League 2017 Cup. In regards to prize money and invited teams, it would be very similar to Worlds, just with a different format. And with the recent addition of Jacob Jarzo Suda as coach, G2 would enter as one of the most well-rounded teams in all of Rocket League, ready to take it to the next level. Still, the roster had never placed top three at any major tournament so far, and in addition to just clearing that podium hurdle, beating Gale Force seemed to be an impossible task. They were on the most dominant run of all time, and appeared to be a roster without any weakness. This will be our first extended gameplay chapter, so if that's not for you, use the chapter guide in the description. Welcome to E-League. Welcome to a sport where reckless driving is encouraged. Oh, with an absolute peach of a shot. Oh, you got ourselves a real match. This is a fusion between speed and strategy. That's a beautiful. This is E-League Cup Rocket League. Oh, oh, oh is it? It. Eight of the greatest teams from around the world converge on the E-League stage. Chiefs are on fire. Big goals. Puts it through. Fast cars. An absolutely phenomenal clip. Sick money. Let's go get that. Kano wins. Let the chaos begin. So 
an awesome game needs an awesome format. We've got the top eight teams from the RLCS Season 4 Championship. Split them into two groups of four. It's round-robin play, of course. Best of five, the format you're used to. And the top two teams from each group will advance to the playoffs. And these are the games we've got coming at you today. We're going to start with an absolute doozy. Gale Force versus Chiefs Esports. Lots to talk about there. A little bit later, G2 Esports versus Ghost Gaming. Method versus Market Esports. And then Cloud9 versus PSG. Um, as a team, like fan favorites by far, you see it crowd-wise on social media everywhere. And a lot of it just has to do with the personality of the team. They're not afraid to go out there. They're very personable, easy to talk to. Rizzo's just a goofball the whole time. He's not afraid yeah. to do a body roll in front of 3,000 people at the World Championship. And that's just the team as a nutshell. JNAPS is a little bit quiet, but he speaks with his performance. You know, he's very, very strong as a player. So he lets that do the talking. What do you think about G2? I mean, he said JNAPS shows it with his performance. He's dead on right. That guy has some of the most insane offensive numbers. The guy tied for number two in MVP medals, number two in shots taken, number two in score generated. The guy's all over the pitch. If JNAPS could be a wrecking ball, he would be because he'll just walk through you and, and score goals. But what have they been lacking lately? Why aren't they converting all of that experience and kind of, you know, fan adoration and that lack of pressure? Why aren't they converting that into trophy wins? Well, to me, it's a little bit of the same problem as Method. They have mm. one of the more stout defenses. They're number four in goals against. So it's like they're a fairly tough team to score against, but again, more of the same. They're number 10 in goals four. So it's like... If the if the offense gets it's it's too JNAPS focused. There's not enough team cohesion and offensive firepower. It feels like on that team. So if they can all really get involved on the offense, then you see a G2 that just destroys people. We will get into the battle between G2 and Ghosts. Teams have literally admitted in interviews that mm -hmm. they don't really study up Ghosts because they don't think they're a huge challenge, and it definitely is an advantage to them. But again, G2, you never know which one's coming. They're like a cousin you only see oh. every few years, but it doesn't. <laughs> Able to put that one through. Sort of back out. Now G2 back up on offense again. Another shot towards net. This one just wide. Genaps in over the top and he'll put it through to O. Oh, G2. Ghosts needing to get this one back down. They need this goal right here. And over the top it will be Lethemir who punches it in. 33 seconds left and it's a one goal game. Territory. The demolitions will help out as well, but Rizzo now demolished and Lethemir to try and take a shot. Jnaps pops it high, but Classics is up and he could send this one in. Just looks for the placement and he gets it. Tie game, Ghost. If they have been able to keep that one going through, now on the other oh, end, G2. No. They've done so many buzzer beaters. Saint Jack gets this one away and it will touch the ground. First overtime of Ely. The bounce off his sign. Get the flick over Rizzo. Now moving up in the one roll. Gets the read and puts it over into the goal, but the block comes through. He's got Jnaps to work with. Looking for a shot opportunity, but Lethemir was there first. Canovio oh, on the top man. two. Nobody in the back. Can anybody make the shot? Here comes Rizzo. Shot does go through, and that'll be the win for G2. Jams trying to push it through <laughs> that defensive position from G2. It works out, but at what cost? Is this still going to cost them here? As Classic sends it up high. It bounces crossbar and out. Zane Jackie will finally be the one to shove it in. Goes one of the team that has definitely debuted the bump meta. Here comes the final shot from Plastics. This one will go through. Ghosts get in the win. You have to stay in our half. We're not going to get this up to you. We can just play nice, hard, strong defense. Oh, Let them no. bodied and net, but Jamps didn't make the shot. And now the breakaway from Classics all the way back down the field. 3-0, Ghosts. Uh, we'll see Ghosts tie up the series as this one comes to an end. 3-0. Match point for one of the teams, so critical one. We are still here in the group stage. Early pressure from Ghost. Lethemir's up, finds the back of the net, some zoning going through. Rizzo demolished in midfield. He'll spawn on the back line. Kronovi can be aggressive, gets it over the top. Brilliant 50 50 win. That's a tie game. And kind of clustering to one half the side of the field and a very quick oh. turnaround for G2. And JNAPS with a shot off of kickoff, complete control, and just put a bit high by Zane Jackie, but the pressure is uh -oh. still here for uh -oh. G2 then. That will be JNAPS to send it in. That's the lead back here. Rizzo demolishing his own net, but Kronovi downfield. They've got things to deal with back home. Lethemir gets the save. Kronovi gets demolished as well. So the back line of G2 staying strong as they're playing kind of a 2 1, and Rizzo's oh. shot goes through. Two goal lead now for G2. We'll hit that final zero second timer. Can't score two goals in zero seconds. And we will see G2 taking the lead in the series. And create more shot opportunities. You see JNAPS lurking in the middle. And he'll try to take the shot, but Lethemir's there. The defense holding on. Finally, Rizzo gets it through, and he'll put it over and in. Midfield, JNAPS now onto the backboard. Nobody in a defensive position here. This one lofting just nice and soft. Rizzo trying to put it through, and now Kronovi onto the other side, both a little bit wide. Difficult angle. Rizzo had to make a quick decision, but JNAPS now able to get it over that last defender. 
Classics winning that 50-50, stealing it away. Lethemir to drop it down. This one goes off the crossbar. It's still in a dangerous place. JNAPs to play it to the side. The accuracy just not there for Ghost at the moment when they needed it most. And in four games, G2 takes the win. And as the numbers there show, great all-round performance from JNAPs. Exactly. We highlighted him going into the match. Yeah. Did a bit of everything when his team needed it. Like, just comprehensive performance from him. Yeah, and that, that was also another thing I touched on, though. You needed to have the well-spread offense there for yeah. G2. They've got three goals, three assists, two goals, three assists. And, then, and then, again, the same thing for uh, Rizzo as well. So the nice, well-rounded approach for the G2 offense worked wonders for them. So this is the Saturday's matches. This is what we've got coming at you today. World champions right at the top of the show, working right the way through to Cloud9 versus Market Esports at about the halfway <laughs> mark. And then it doesn't end there. Gale Force will be going again right the way through to the last game of the day. PSG Esports versus Market Esports. And these are the standings. This is how it all went down on day one. Group A makes sense. Group B, mm. not quite so much. And we're expecting to probably see their, their comfort zone. Well, it begins now, game one between G2 and Chiefs. Renovi off the back wall as here comes Drippe and hello Chiefs, welcome to the party. To work with Rizzo had a chance for a shot and just launched it high. Renovi with a pass out to Jay Naps, he goes and gets it and he finds the corner, it's tied up. Plenty of time to react. I like that Drippe put that up high. He noticed that everyone in front of him was on the ground Ooh, and now you'll see it. The shot in from Torsat. Drippe. Over to Cronovi in the corner, giving to Rizzo. Bit of an awkward play. Jake lurking, says do it, and he takes it away. Chiefs extend the lead. G2, fall the Chiefs. A great start for the Aussies. In that game number one, unfortunately, the placement of them just a little bit off. Rizzo steals it off the hood, and hello, G2. Even at the basics, you know, just to cover your situation in that. Oh, I don't want to cover too much while this goal might happen. Oh, Drippe back wall. It's wide open. Cronovi's going to make it 2 0. You're never going to see him miss that. Chiefs struggling to make. Struggling even more to make chances in their favor. Only three shots, one of them oh, right there. Hello, Torsas just put it in his own net. Feels bad. <laughs> and that is going to wind down game number two for us. The Chiefs struggle to get really anything going offensively on field. Tap down right there for Jake. Wants the left side and off the mark. Torsas follows through and it goes high. Here comes Drippe into the net. And again, G2 hold firm as Rizzo denied at just about the midfield line. The net's wide open, though. The quick pass. j goes high. Kronovi can't get there. Actually, Drippe comes up short, and Kronovi oh. not able to react to it. Ground. Can Jake keep this up? We'll see. It goes right down, but Rizzo will clear it out. And that will finally push us into overtime. Understand the next goal is what will give them potentially the loss if they have any large mistakes. You'll always see one, maybe Ooh. two volleys, but the missed defensive wow. touch, and Kronovi will give G2 their second win of the series. The push. Gives up space in that midfield, though. Actually makes a, a second guess of himself and turns around and keeps it in this G2 corner. Torsos into the top right, and the Chiefs out in front in game four. Rizzo leaves this for Kenobi. No boost in the tank, though, for him. He's going to have to figure out how to do it. He doesn't need it. He doesn't need boost at all. He's pitched in the top of the box, but Rizzo following close behind, just out of reach. And Drippe actually slides through. I did not believe it. A minute remaining for them. They need something to come back and help out as that is not going to be it. Kronovi takes one away off the side wall. G2 found a nice answer. They shut them down here in the past three games and G2 going to advance on to day three. I mean, we talk about that turning moment it was a lot because yeah, it was a missed shot, but it's because Torsos had to dodge a demo that was coming at him. That's why That's he was true. stuck in that net. So as soon as they did that, it felt like they were timid the rest of the series, and a lot of it was because of those bumps demos, and there was just one touch pass plays after that. From you make a good I mean, we talked about Gale Force being the number one team in the world right now, but everyone else is so close behind them, and this is one of those matches where I think that's going to show. And it almost, to me, this might come as a surprise, it just feels like kind of a, a flip of a coin on whether who to pick. I'm going to go with Gale Force because they're the world champs right now, mm. but I could easily see G2 taking this. One eternity later. And I made a classic commentator's faux pas. I was like, this is a good time to play the world champions, you know? They yeah. might take the foot off. No, absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, we, we said it would dominant. be, you know, either either they would both be loose and they'd both be just trying to get that top seed and they'd, you know, have a great match or maybe they'd be like, you know, oh, yeah, the pressure's off, we're not going to try as hard and it just went completely to one side as Gale Force took the win. I mean, that's what it does, though. Practice makes perfect. Why let off the gas when you can really send a message to these guys? You put yourself at first seed, you put yourself in that advantage. I mean, they've got to feel confident going through. I mean, not dropping much. I mean, Wave, you've been talking all week, like how many games they dropped all throughout, you know, the World Championship. It was only four, and here it's also a very minimal amount. So, 
you know, I really don't want to play want. against these guys. No, nah, you absolutely can't. There's nowhere to hide, and they're just being so productive. You know, look at that. I mean, a 5-0 right in the middle of, you know, it started out competitive. I was like, oh, this mm -hmm. might be a good series, but then they just find that extra gear. Oh, That's it was still a great series too. just for Gale Force. Yeah, oh, no doubt. If you're okay. a Gale Force fan. You, 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 you outscored them 9-1. to one. I mean, that's pretty one-sided series right there. It doesn't get much more one-sided than that. I'm Cameron Bills, and I go by Cronovi. My name's Jacob Knappman, and I go by JNaps. My name is Dylan Rizzo, and I go by Rizzo. The name of our team is G2 Esports. When we first formed, we all wanted to succeed. I think we all had the same mentality. We all had something to prove. We had this amazing synergy, and we knew that this was magic. Drippe back wall, it's wide open. Kronobi's gonna make it 2-0. You're never gonna see him miss that. No. I was kind of drawn into playing Rocket League from a game called Supersonic Acrobatic Rocket Powered Battle Cars. I played it for, I think, about six years before I began to alpha test Rocket League. So I had a lot of experience with this new genre. Execution from G2 was about as good as it could be. The Ooh. drop down to Kronobi will get there to sink it underneath Lesimir. Anyone who ever played Rocket League and had like a competitive feeling knew who he was. The first stream I ever watched was actually his. Well, his nickname is The Mountain, so he's the one everyone tries to climb. I would say the best player in this team is JNaps. 100%. I don't think anybody else would fight me on that one. Talk about the individual players. No one better than the NA MVP this season, JNaps, coming through. His mechanics are absolutely amazing. He's the one who gets all the good goals. He's the clutch playmaker. He's the one who's going to 1v3 the opposing team the most. G2 back up on offense again. Another shot towards net. This one just wide. Gnaps in over the top, and he'll put it through to O G2. I know if I'm having a bad day and he's having a good day, we'll probably still win. <laughs> is definitely the best defender on the team. He's got the most saves on the team, I think, stat-wise. Classes over the top. This one doesn't go in. No, Rizzo denies at the goal line. Sends it to the side. And in four games, G2 takes the win. It really comes from, since me and Kronovi are really aggressive players, it kind of forces Rizzo to be back. But he's just so good at being back that it works. Any shot, Rizzo can save. I'd say since we formed, we get along really well. Rizzo is the jokester of the team. He's always going to bring a good mood into a room, no matter what. If he's feeling good, everybody's feeling good. I would describe Crow as quiet, but he has his moments of breaking out of his shell. He's always got those dad jokes. Oh, yeah, he does have oh, a lot yeah. of dad jokes. JNaps can be quiet sometimes, but you know his heart's in everything he does. He's got an amazing competitive drive, and he means everything he says. I think we work well together because we're always critical with each other. <laughs> it all works out. It's perfect. Having all those eyes on you and impressing all those people, both online and on television, would be amazing. If we keep our comms clean and we trust each other, we can go very far. Do you think you can win E-League? Hell yeah. Oh yeah. There you can see Gale Force reigning world champions going up against Cloud9. And in a shock, Mocket Esports made it this far. None of the so called experts predicted it. And they're going to be <laughs> going up against G2 Esports. That's why, as I'm saying, you're just a pretty face to me now. Yeah. <laughs> so they're both in agreement about Mocket. I, I said all Europe final. You said, well, actually, no, you didn't say I didn't say it. It, You're not I going to. to. You never right. will. You're learning here. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad. <laughs> it's slowly figuring things out. It, it should be a really good one, though, because, I mean, like you said, or like the desk said, Mocket have looked absolutely fantastic. G2 have looked great as well. And it all starts here. The ball still in the corner and up in a dangerous position. A lot of free balls. Very peek into the middle. Kronovi pinches it off the bar and makes a sick save. One thing. It's very peek up to make this block off the ceiling. Here comes Kronovi, pass to Rizzo, a lot to pick from, and finds the top center, G2 on the board first. And it's going to be JNaps to try and follow through. Rizzo's going to make an attempt to give it back. It's an awkward play again. There's Kronovi to follow it up into the middle, and G2's up by two with 45 left. Wow. But it's okay. G2, nice start to the series. Good pitch it's from JNaps on that one too, just avoiding the challenge altogether. Hello, open net, and that will do it. Fairy Peak finally finds the back of the net for Mocket, and they're on the board. Blim Freaky off the back wall makes a save. JNaps into the corner for Kronovi, and just off the nose, can't get there. Just a little bit low on boost. Had the ability, but another one immediately responded. G2 ties it up. And be cut down by Fairy Peak. Kronovi, JNaps, as this one's off the corner. He's up there first, wants the lower right, and actually it's going to bounce into the top right. Kronovi makes it 2-1, but can't get to it. 
Freaky air dribble does not go for a pass. Doesn't really have anyone to get it to. Pashi off the corner, and Fairy Peak is going to have to wait. They missed the clear, and he'll slam it home. It's tied up. Nice pass from Pashi. Here comes Rizzo. He's too slow. Freaky to Fairy Peak, and it's in the right side. What a shot from FP. And in no small part to Freaky and Fairy Peak, that one goes just wide, and game two finds its way to the ground. Stop. Both teams at this point tied up in the series and goals. First one to make that difference happen here as the shot comes out. A Whoa. contest from J Naps and Kronobi puts it top left. Save for him, already back set on defense. Rizzo on the dribble, it goes right under Pashi. Fairy Peak gets it thrown over his head too with a demo off the back wall. It's wide open and that is going to be 2 0 G2. Dang, hey, I mean, we know you're going to shoot it. Sometimes you just got to pack the box of cheese. You never know where that angle is going to go. Just. Stick as many bodies as you can and hold, but oh. that time it's not going to matter. Pashi over the top, back within one. Naps goes right under one. Pashi's going to leave this for Fairy Peak. Rizzo gets beat. Kronovi has Pashi beat. Out to J-Naps. They get that right back to 1-2. And that is a sick play, and they go up by two again. And that is going to do it. G2. Take game three. Locked at zeros past the halfway point. Rizzo can't drill it through another. Fairy Peak able to play that in the corner, but immediately sent oh right goodness. back down oh and on it. What a pitch clear coming out from j -Nap. A beautiful touch, reading this perfectly. That angle oh. just absolutely, oh my god. Oh, that's perfect. Ready to play that back inside. They actually had two commit on defense. Could have been dangerous for Maka, but they are able to hold off. Fairy Peak taking away that corner boost and gets two demos. Kronovi has to scramble back. He's not going to make it, and that's a great equalizer set up by Fairy Peak. Jane Apps, some time, pass to Rizzo, quick one, two, and just off the bar, follows through, and that's gonna be 2-1, and G2 threatening. Still falls in front, and that will be cleared away by Rizzo, G2 threatening to take down Mocket, it's danger zone. That backup field, what? don't blame him, this Mocket team starting to play Whoa. quick as a shot and bar down, barely missing by Fairy Peak. Looming. G2 threatening to take down Mocket in their second big live event. There's an air dribble and he can't fit it into the left side. Rizzo's gonna slam it home and G2 might do it. 18 seconds this time. Last time it was 25 with this air dribble. So well played, shadowing it that whole way. Oh, Fairy Peak waiting so patiently. You can hear the crowd counting down. Fairy Peak can't get the pass. It just has to touch the ground. It's on net and J Naps can't stop with the delay. Rizzo can't, doesn't matter. G2 have done it. Uh, what can you say about J Naps as well? You know, you can see that with that high assist count. Like just, that's what I was talking about. You know, if, I'm, if uh, they were Barcelona, he was definitely messy. And for a long time, whenever you'd see really highly mechanically skilled players, they were your strikers. They were the ones that would always put them in. But now as everything has changed, those people have actually become the support roles. Mm. They use their creativity to break the defense so they can give their teammates the shot. So you see high assists on people like him, on Squishy Muffins, on people like Bluey, because it's usually their creativity that just completely destroys the defense and leaves it wide open for their teammates to follow suit. We are about to get into the grand final. Gale Force versus G2 Esports. But before we do that, we've woke Golden Boy up from his food coma, and he's going to be talking to j -Naps. Okay. Well, let's talk about the Grand Finals then, because Gale Force did sweep you guys last. And, well, this is a very talented team. What's the answer? What's the plan going into this Grand Final? Well, Gale Force makes the least mistakes out of any team in all of Rocket League, so we just got to make sure we sharpen up our plays and play at the speed they do, and that's the only way we can beat them. All right, man, well, I'm looking forward to the Grand Final. Jane Apps, always a pleasure to speak with you, my friend, a clown. But I love the dude. Anyway, Richard, your thoughts on Jay Mapson? Yeah, well, what can be said about him? I, you know, outside of the Gale Force guys, I think he's one of the players who's really stood out for me this tournament. Just a great sort of all-rounder, incredibly versatile. And you saw in that last match, pinpoint precision on his passes. Nice yeah. bit of alliteration. It was, it's been an excellent showing here from Jane Apps because uh, we've all known him. Hey, he's the guy who shits the ball. So it's really good to see him come out here and provide the same opportunities to his team that he's been getting all season long. And it's resulted in that very well-rounded G2 offense that I think they needed to have coming into here. To be fair, I didn't give him a lot of credit versus Mocket. They played excellent. But it's a whole different beast versus Gale Force. I mean, he, he hit the nail on the head. They make the least amount of mistakes mm -hmm. of any team in Rocket League. And I just don't know if... What I saw versus Mocket, it looked good, but I don't know if that's good enough. Guys, we've got to get ready for predictions. Gale Force, 4-1. Okay. I'll give them one game. 
very kind of you. <laughs> well, yeah. well, we only gave them one goal earlier in that sweep. So uh, they had a difficult performance at the Worlds. They went 3-1 there. They went 3-0 here for Gale Force. And still, Gale Force has not given us a reason to doubt them. Got to give it to Gale Force. It's going to be a dominant fashion. Caught in net, all three of them there. But they were luckily able to push that out. But barely, Violent Panda almost wasn't able to make a short contest Ooh. after Jnap. Rizzo to Jnaps, the pass comes through. Jnaps now with Kronovian support. Kanaf over the top, and he's got it towards the goal. Oh dear, Rizzo with the flip. Kanaf could put this in. All oh, the fakes come through, and Violet Panda will slam it in. Tie game. Kronovian will flip back down onto the ground and then get the setup here for Jnaps. Looking for the goal. Can he double tap it in? He can. Clean blaze from the North American MVP, and G2 takes the lead. To go here in game number one. We talked about it on the desk before this match that Early momentum could really help G2. And they've got this one in front of the box. JNAP's excellent placement game. And doing exactly what we were talking about earlier. JNAP's will put in another one. That was just basically the nail in the coffin here for game one. And this game is definitely over. It's just a matter of the ball touching the ground. You see Turbo Pulsa already doing donuts in the middle. He knows it's over. G2, clean victory in game number one. KDAP up to midfield. Rizzo's there with the challenge. Now okay, Kadop, look at the pass. The Violet pass! Panda puts it in. Oh, oh dear, I think this might have been an own goal from G2. Well, his only other option would have been maybe to just body out Kadop, jump on top of him. Oh, push him off the kickoff, Violent Panda puts in another one. It wasn't an actual pass back to him, and they suffered from that mistake. This is the sort of thing that Gale Force is good at no matter what. They put oh, in another my. one. Second kickoff goal for Gale Force here in game two. On the corner. Kadop falls back, look at the infield pass play, it goes off the post, Jnaps so close, and Kronovi comes in, able to put that one through there on the board. Maybe a taste of things to come in game three, we'll see. So we're all tied up in a game apiece. The shot down, Turbo Pulsa needs to play this, and he does, gets it out. It's the last man back, a shot that was on target. Violent Panda, Turbo Pulsa, and Kadop all deep in Gale in G2 territory, Violent Panda puts it through. Back. See if they can get that lead back that they earned in game number one. Jams with a miss, Turbo pulls it onto the uh -oh. open net, and it looks like maybe there was a mechanical error from JNAPS. Oh, he had a good win up there in the corner, but his teammates were retreating. Now Turbo pulls it so Drop. deep, the pass down to Violent Panda. Good interception by Rizzo, and then JNAPS with the fake pass one. Now the pass inwards, Kronovi can just boom this one down the field. G2's on the board. Them really effectively bumping in this game. I think I've seen them going for it a few times, but just not finding their targets. And it could be a difference maker is right now. It's that's what slows them down, and then their offense starts to fall apart. Still be on here for G2. Shanaps falls back. Turbo Pulsa plays it back into his own corner, and Rizzo says thanks. I'll push that one around, and Kronovi finds the shot, gets it around the post. G2's got the lead. They're mowing each other, so momentary 2v2. Both players will spawn to their back lines. Shanaps sends the shot back in, and goes through 2-0 now for G2. What seems so quiet for so long. Yeah. G2 have woken up, they've been able to put the strikes on, and Shanaps Never ceases to amaze us. From him, Violent Panda looking to play, but just falls back and opts for Kadop to take the shot. Here, Turbo Pulsa looking to connect. Now, Kronovi, the pinch off the ground. Excellent placement there. How did he even pull this off? As that ball's going to touch the ground, it will. G2, 3-0 now over Gale Force in game four. And Rizzo decides to actually take it from him. These two players moved out. JNAP's now across the field. Bro had no boost. Yeah, that was a good play then. Turbo pulls again, he gets oh. this, no, Trinovi shuts him down, but Kadop's got the finish, Gale Force takes the lead. In this one, now Violet Panda back to JNAPS, he'll pass into Kronovi, Rizzo actually ends up with the pass, JNAPS now off the back wall, Kronovi up and oh. doesn't make contact, fake him out, but they don't fall for it, Violet Panda gets the tackle, Kronovi back into JNAPS, airborne, could possibly make it happen, but it's not there, Rizzo now back into the box again, JNAPS with a kill, and Kronovi to try to take a shot, brilliant play, Turbo Pulsa says not today, Gale Force now with three wins under their belt, one win away from being crowned E-League champion, of the likes of which I don't think you should be playing any sport in, but you know what, we're gonna do it. Turbo Pulse looks for the pass to Kadop. Quick offense here as Kadop finds it off the crossbar. Are you kidding me? Now Rizzo. Clean carry again. Violent Panda looking for the demo, but it's not going to happen. Now Kadop back over to Violent Panda, who's in an offensive position. JNAPS makes the save, keeps what the game competitive. But for that pass, they know it's the only way to make it through. You can't take useless shots. Look for a teammate. Missed cool. him. A demolition from Rizzo. Was a Gives a shot to JNAPS. JNAPS puts it in. Tie game here in game six. And the shot towards the end. Here comes Violent Panda for the redirect, but the shot goes back down. Overtime here in game six. A Violent Panda shot towards net. JNAPS, JNAPS is there. Gets the save. What comes their way? They still always stay organized. No matter who's getting blown up, there's someone there to make a save. JNAPS over. Rizzo can just backflip. It doesn't happen. Oh, oh dear. The own goal. It doesn't happen. The oh, my God. Choke on the goal line and we go to game 
seven. Nine. This is the closest G2's been to winning a championship as well. One game away with home field advantage. JNAPS takes the shot, puts it through, and G2's got the lead. JNAPS in the back, plays it through. Kate up. Final Panda puts it back into the box, but Rizzo's there. And Cronovi up. Playing fullback, looking for demos and for boost. Rizzo just goes for the carry, gets it the whole length of the field, and they're up by two. Fourth corner, JNAP's up, the shot into the middle. Turbo Pulsa puts it back, and now Kadop up. He's got an open met to shoot at right now as the G2 players go flying back, and it's not in time. Kadop makes it a one goal game. Keeps on coming through for G2. Rizzo out to Cronovi. JNAP's shadowing up to take the shot, puts it down and in. 3 1 G2. Has two. Looking to bump Kronovi, it's up to Janaps in the corner. Final Panda takes it from him. Turbo Pulse will lurk in the midfield. Looking for the shot opportunity, goes up, puts it downtown, but Janaps gets the save as well. Kronovi in the midfield. Turn around. G2 not wanting to fall prey to this breakaway. And Turbo, Turbo. Pulse up, puts it through, just got it over the top of that front defender. It's looking for Kronovi, Turbo Pulse puts it down, and Final Panda in a deep cherry pick position. It's Turbo he gets Pulse, the shot. but the save comes through, and G2 gets it away. Final six seconds, five. Four, they play it out. Turbo Pulsa picks it up. He's got Violet Panda to work with, but they have to keep it in the air. It doesn't happen. G2 are the elite champions. The current world champions have been defeated. Weeks after they take their massive victory, G2 are able to come back in extremely clean fashion. I've never seen them look this good. Unbelievable. Kronovi's been looking for this win since season one of the Rocket League Championship Series. And you heard it. You were just talking about it earlier. This home field advantage he had, they were behind them the whole way. Never let the energy go. And now here, G2 Esports, the E-League champions. The Knapsack, as he would become called, was born. After the long seven-game grand finals, J Naps and G2 had achieved what they set out to do when forming the roster. It's hard to describe how big of underdogs they were, and to this day, it remains one of the biggest upsets in RLCS history, likely only second to Cloud9 a few seasons later. J Naps proved he was one of the most clutch players in the game too, even with all the impressive goals he scored, nothing can beat this insane save in the last few seconds of Game 7 to win it all. Our humble king even shared his behind-the-scenes motivation to perform so well. On a more serious note to close out E-League, though, I wanted to include a quick shout-out to Papa Naps. While it is a lot more common now, he always helped J Naps with travel in the early days and has attended almost every international event since RLCS Season 3, showing his dedication to his son and the eSport. Looking ahead to 2018, however, Rocket League is a game of short off-seasons and even shorter margins of error when it comes to staying at the top. With just a two-month break to enjoy their success, Dreamhack Leipzig in Season 5 was fast approaching. Fresh off their E-League win, JNAPS was ready to build off of the newfound sustained success G2 was having. And unlike the G2 of the past, they understood they had to continue putting in the work to stay at the top. With the two-month off-season quickly coming to a close, the team headed off to Germany and began their preparation for Dreamhack. After the first day of groups finished, though, it was looking like perhaps G2 had let their recent success get to their heads and were swept by new NA team Dignitas, though the knapsack was in his usual highlight form. Um, all the time! What a shot here from JNAPS. Rizzo pushing that ball into the middle and what just bouncing up off the left and being able to air roll his car onto the other side of the ball. This placed them second in their group and meant they would now have to yet again face Gale Force, who were eager for a chance to get some revenge. It went about as expected, with Gale Force taking the 3 0 win, but G2 would clutch up against Fnatic for the final match of the group stage to reach playoffs. The human highlight reel was showing no signs of slowing down, and in the playoffs, anything can happen. The first round brought a chance at redemption too, once again facing Dignitas who had swept them earlier in the tournament. And this time, G2 was more prepared. After a back-and-forth battle they would head to Game 5, and with this goal would take down the newly formed team in a very close series. 
gonna have to make something happen because for the most part, a lot of Dignitas' goals have come from punishing. Oh, oh. what? I'm so what surprised up? Turtle didn't get there. Per usual though, in the semi-finals, it would only get tougher. The clash of North America's Titans, G2 and NRG. NRG was on a tear this tournament and looked completely different from usual. After moving on from Jacob, Fireburner and Garrett G had picked up young prodigy Justin, who was too young to attend DreamHack, and Torment was subbing in his place. Their success was immediate, now facing off against G2 in the semi-finals, and it was exciting to watch how fast a pro player could adapt to another roster in just a few days. When the match started, G2 would get out to a quick 2-0 lead before losing the next three straight games to drop to match point. Jay Knapps was in great form and was the only player on G2 to even score a goal until Game 4, but it was obvious he would need help if they were going to win. This one again off the post, and Jay Knapps over the top of one, can he do it again? Right over the what top and off the bar and he's done it! With 36 seconds left, get in my knapsack! Out the side, a great demo, it's towards the net, it's a tough save and they get slammed out of the Jay way! Naps. Jay Knapps does it again, they're going to Game 7! though, realizing he's beat to that ball. G2 again making solid reads, they steal the ball away, it's not on target, Fireburner almost put it in his own no, net, and Jay Nap says thank you very much Fireburner, nice pass! Over the top of each other, NRG's got nothing in the tank, they tap it into the side, G2 knock out NRG! The man just could not miss, and for the grand final, a matchup with a shockingly good PSG team would end up being next. In a bracket run almost no one saw coming, they had beaten two high-ranked European teams, and were ready to now face off against North America's greatest. And of course, for the third playoff game in a row, G2 would take the series to match point. In Game 7, with it all tied up 1-1, one one, we would head to overtime. From Bluey, the Zero Boost Warrior sets it up, follow up, it's Bluey's to win! And it's gonna be Ferra to turn it all down! G2 had been playing on borrowed time, and it had finally caught up to them. J Naps would point out the obvious. Playing every game so close in a row was just too tiring for the team, and they couldn't maintain their usual standards of play. Still, reaching two grand finals back-to-back -back was a massive accomplishment, and it seemed G2 was brewing a dynasty of their own. Heading into Season 5, league play was much less of a concern for G2, hitting plays like this. Left mid. Looks to try and clear, but instead it's only over to Jane Apps. Has got Rizzo. Might try and go for the double tap. Oh my goodness! G2 are insane right now! Oh my gosh, you said Rizzo's playing out of his mind, but it doesn't matter if he doesn't get the help from J Naps. That pass spot on. They would finish the season at 6 and 1, beating every team except for NRG, who had been on a tear with Justin. This season also contained one of J Naps' most iconic goals, scoring this goal in Game 5, overtime against Cloud9 to solidify top two in the region. Play, and what a game we've got. Renovi, back out. The shot from JNAPS, does it go Whoa. in? It does! What? Gimmick was airborne, but it didn't matter. And G2, two seasons in a row, give Cloud9 the loss. They've waited so long to take their shots, waiting for their moment, JNAPS! Even though JNAPS had almost doubled his goals scored from the previous season, he would end up as MVP second, with teammate Kronovi just behind at third. G2 was going to be taking the playoffs far more seriously this season too, not wanting to have to face a team like Gale Force in such an early round during Worlds. In a statement series, to prove this sentiment, they would demolish Cloud9, not allowing more than a single goal per game the entire series. The grand final would prove to be quite the hurdle, however, having to face NRG, who had swept G2 earlier in the season. As expected, the series was very close and headed into Game 7. G2 had proved they were one of the most clutch teams in Rocket League, but as the time ticked down in the final game, it could have gone either way. The shot is shut down by Garrett G at the midfield, and with 10 seconds remaining, Fireburner's oh, touch no! goes above the goal. Can Rizzo get there in time? He does! He puts it in with 7 seconds left! G2 has the lead! Regional champions at last, G2 had done it. In just a three-month span, they won E-League, took second at DreamHack, and placed first in all of NA. With multiple MVP, striker, and playmaker awards to his name, J Naps was the best player in the entire world, an achievement that cannot be understated. Now for the final item left on the bucket list, 
a World Championship trophy. With their new constant success, many predicted them to win it all, and it seemed all but certain we would be seeing a deep bracket run for G2. Their first matchup of Landon would be against Complexity, who had been on G2's bucket list for several seasons. Complexity, made up of a few names you might recognize, was heading into RLCS as the EU number four seed and had the longest standing roster in all of Rocket League. G2, on the other hand, was the second longest standing roster and entering as the number one seed. The beginning of a classic was born. G2 need time. one right now to avoid the sweep. A lot does have boost for this. He wants to challenge. Genevs wants to be patient. Rizzo's there for the touch. He keeps it up high. Final chance, and that's going to be it. Complexity sweep the number one seed of North America. In an extremely surprising series, G2 would drop to the lower bracket early yet again. While every game was close, G2 had just entered the event as the second strongest team and got swept by the eighth. Disappointing for sure, but the team knew they couldn't let it get them down. We had seen this before and G2 always bounced back. In lowers, they would face the worst team in the tournament, NA fourth seed Evil Geniuses. On paper, this was by far the biggest mismatch of the tournament and would serve as a good confidence builder for G2 to get ready for their lower bracket run. Sitting on the ceiling. Rome. Blow away, JNAPS over to Kenobi. Classics has it towards the goal. Rizzo's there, he's got full boost, but he misses. Here comes Chrome, can he put it in? Keep him alive, he does! Evil geniuses, nobody believes it, but they stay alive and G2's going home. It didn't even feel possible. A team built on creating consistency who had reached the grand finals in all three recent major tournaments were utterly embarrassed and already out of the world championship. Yet again, right after things were looking up, JNAPS and G2 hit rock bottom. However, because of all their recent wins, this failure felt more like a fluke than inconsistency, and many assumed G2 would be right back at the top as Season 6 rolled around. JNAPS himself echoed this sentiment, taking the loss rather well, and looked ahead to the near future for the team. Sadly, there were no more major tournaments until Season 6 would start up, which meant we wouldn't get another great look at the team for the next four months. After competing in smaller B&A tier events to stay consistent, the months continued ticking by until Season 6 was upon us. Now was the time to prove Worlds was indeed a fluke by reclaiming their crown as the best in North America. There were going to be a few more reasons to do better as well. As Season 6 started, we saw the same G2 from the last three seasons, beginning in first place with a blazing 4-0 start. JNAPS was playing so good, he was even making defensive highlights. Jacob hits it back into the G2 corner, Kronovi takes possession. Jacob with a challenge, Rizzo gets a good read, but Joro off the ceiling, what? and a save from JNAPS at the goal line to keep the lead for G2! Week 4 would be a minor hiccup losing to Cloud9 after they found momentum late in the series. But this made G2 more determined than ever to finish the year off strong though, and after two close series that both went G2's way, they would finish as second in NA, yet again just one series away from having that elusive perfect season. And for the third season in a row, JNAP's impact on the entire RLCS scene was a big one. While he would yet again finish as second during MVP voting, he was the only player ever to be in the top three more than twice, which speaks greatly about the consistency he was putting out. And on an even higher note, he ended the season as the golden striker, averaging over an entire goal per game. Now focusing back on playoffs, their path to first in NA would now be the same as the final week of the regular season, playing EG and then NRG. The EG series was a relatively easy warm-up for G2, and after a Chicago own goal, we got some interesting foreshadowing. Almost it was. Chicago is also insane. Look at Rizzo and Chicago need to team up. <laughs> Why? So they can really lose? Like, what do you mean? Oh, yeah, I guess that'd be, that'd be, that's a bad idea. <laughs> team up for whose sake? <laughs>
Now, the usual clash for the top of North America, G2 and NRG, an all-time classic to head into Worlds as the best from their region. Through the first three games, it was looking like the usual as well, with G2 soon to be at the top of NA. However, in Game 4, NRG would get a massive boost in momentum after an early 3-0 lead, then never look back. Falling short of being regional champions again was below expectations, but it was just one bad series, and the team had looked solid ever since their world's performance. JNAPS had also made enough money to hit an awesome personal milestone, buying his first car, a $50,000 GLA 45 AMG. However, all focus would now be on Worlds, being do or die for the roster. Failing to produce a good result twice in a row after their online success would be unacceptable. It was time for the takeover. Worlds was going to be held in Vegas this year, which made for an easy distraction, but as Jay Naps would put it. This was actually my first time ever in Vegas. I'm not allowed to gamble or anything, but I still found stuff to do. Like, uh, I got to walk around to see, see things I usually don't see in Canada. With game day quickly arriving, their first match would be against the EU3 seed, Flipside Tactics. Jay Naps and Rizzo seemed to be solid, but Crow was not quite in usual form. While their playstyle helped to spread the ball around, at Worlds, because the competition level is so high, even just one person not on point would really hurt the team. For reference, a rating of 1 on the far right is an average performance. Still, the series was a close one, and G2 would face the EU fourth seed PSG in round 1 of lowers. In true G2 fashion, a back-and-forth battle would occur, and the series would go down to the wire in Game 5, the entire year's success would hinge on this single game. Fourth we go wave shootout here between PSG and G2. Looking like overtime as Shaw sends it towards the goal. Rizzo puts it away. j Naps to keep it from Vera. Dropping it back down in. Fruity puts Fruity! it through. Nine seconds left. j Naps versus Fruity. He gets it past him. Can they put it in? Up above the box. Nobody's there. They can't find the follow-up. The clock is dead. j Naps has to get underneath it. And he misses PSG stays alive. Having to qualify and missing out on E-League is something that was definitely a bummer to us uh, since, you know, we last time we went and we ended up winning the whole thing. It was something that we wanted to, like, defend our title in and just go and have fun at another tournament. So not being able to compete in that is definitely heartbreaking. Yet again, G2 finished with the worst result possible and now would not even be attending the E-League tournament this year. It was obvious the entire team was heartbroken. They had finished as a top two team from their region both seasons and then won a whopping zero series when it mattered most. j Naps simply deserved better. And something needed to change heading into 2019. After failing to win a single game during Season 5 and 6 at Worlds, G2 had tried changing their routine, mentality and playstyle, but nothing seemed to work. But who would be removed? All three were legends of the game, and still considered top players in all of Rocket League. That's why on January 7th, even though it was obvious change was coming, G2's announcement would shock the RLCS scene. Cronovi was released, and Chicago was brought on to help round out the roster. Crow had been the founding member of G2, and was a former world champion, but J Naps knew emotions couldn't get in the way of team success. So while it was tough to change, Chicago had always been a great player, who was held back by his surrounding cast. And now on G2, the squad had high hopes going into 2019. Another fun what-if that happened before they finalized the third is they tried out legendary NRG player Garrett G before ultimately deciding on Chicago because of playstyle reasons. Further down the road, it clearly ended up working out for both teams, but J Naps and Garrett G have always been one of the best hypothetical duos in North America, and it would have been fun to watch. Now the new roster was ready to go, and the first major tournament of the year, WSOE4, would take place just three weeks later. After arriving in Vegas, they almost didn't even get off the ground, scraping through the group stage by just one game after a clutch 3-1 win against TSM to close out the day. There was still some good news, though. Chicago had been arguably the best player on the team, and it was clear they were having fun. I've ever seen, I think, three overtimes total. I feel like... Two goals was the max difference between you guys in each game. Uh, very close series, and, and I want to talk to you guys about that. We're going to start with Chicago here. Can you Entering as the third seed, they would now have to play Turbo Pulsar, led Dignitas, 
which likely meant the end for G2 in the single elimination playoff bracket, and as Achieves would note. But you can look at historically, G2 has only beaten Dignitas one time. And that was back when they won E-League in 2017. Otherwise, Dignitas has got the better of these guys pretty much every time. So you're curious to see if Yukio or Chicago makes a difference in that. But this was a different G2, and they were here to prove the roster move was a good one. The series would be a back-and-forth battle, and G2 would find themselves winning the series 3-2, heading into Game 6. Down one goal with just 10 seconds left, Chicago would prove why he was meant to be on the roster. G2, trying to tie it up and force overtime yet again, oh, no. and they do it somehow! Chicago, with this shot in the final seconds, gets it by the Stignatos defense. How did he do this? Passing it out to the middle, the shot off the crossbar, and follow-up shot, and Chicago scores it! G2 is moving on! Sadly, their next matchup with NRG would end their playoff run. But the team had looked incredible for just forming weeks prior. J Naps would summarize it well. It felt good to finally just get a win. On a personal note, this was the first tournament I ever watched after seeing it promoted on the main menu in Rocket League, so it will always hold a special place in my heart because it started me on this incredible eSport. Now, focusing back on G2, there would be four DreamHack events this year, bringing the overall tally for major events in 2019 to 9. DreamHack also changed their format to this unfortunate monstrosity for every tournament. Because of this, for time and simplicity reasons, I will only be focusing on the final Sunday playoff bracket. Just remember, if I only talk about a few games, they were still actually very successful and made top 8 or better. The first DreamHack of the year, Leipzig 2019, would take place in February, three weeks after the conclusion of WSOE. After making it to Day 3, Savage would play upset and send them home in the first round. J Naps, now a veteran of the game, summarized it pretty well. While it is just a single tweet, I thought this was one of the first major showings of how much J Naps had matured after just a few seasons in the league. Instead of the usual silence or a negative comment, it was acceptance and looking forward to the next one. The squad was just a little off, and the team clearly had a lot of potential. J Naps, now being in a dual threat offense, was still flourishing even though the spotlight was no longer solely on him. After DreamHack, there was a rare two-month break until Season 7 League play would begin. While things wouldn't be perfect, the roster being together for several months likely meant we would get to watch the new G2 near their full potential. Entering April, however, Week 1 would prove to be a massive challenge. After losing Game 1 in a match that was a predicted sweep for G2, Game two would be lost in one of the most brutal ways possible. So puts it on the backboard. Chicago's airborne. Sipical's not quite there. And here comes Jamps with the last one. Oh, no! The opportunity was there. The shot was going in the goal, and he falls on it. Possibly another chance. Up, another follow-up. Jamps fights it off the post, and it's out. The luck is not there. The woodwork is unforgiving, and we play on. B gets a third touch, and Sathya with the help might be able to put this one away. Sipical into the net. Three to two, almost seven minutes. Space Station get the win backs against the wall the new g2 would find their identity a great reverse sweep to start league play the future was looking bright as james bot would say I i'm just I think this is the beginning of the g2 clutch storyline you know that we saw yeah, okay in, in many situations before chicago especially just clutching it up chicago talk about you know roster move we, we, the, that was one of the big uh, talking points coming into the season chicago yeah. how good of a move it was well i think uh this kind of answers it for us Rizzo had been looking good in the Dominus too, even putting up some great goals during the series. While in regards to this documentary he has mostly flown under the radar, there is no question he was the backbone of G2 for many seasons, enabling J Naps to show off his true skills. The exciting matchups wouldn't end there either, with a revenge match against Crow's new team Rogue. This time the back and forth battle was expected, and heading into game five overtime, the series could have gone either way. Affording J Naps to the corner. Kronovi again, looking for some space for his team. T out the Rizzo, Chicago, shot on, and it's a goal for G2! They win in game five overtime, picking up a win against Rome. If it wasn't obvious already, Chicago had earned his spot. From then on, it would be back to business as usual, with G2's only loss being to NRG. North America was a pretty clearly defined region when looking back on it. While there was some variation, G2 just couldn't quite clear the hurdle of NRG, 
and Cloud9 just couldn't quite clear the hurdle of G2, making them the constant top three in that order. With the recent addition of the RLRS instead of the previous qualification system, the regional championship bracket would now be single elimination. G2 would be eliminated in their semi-final matchup in what may have been the most boring playoff bracket of all time. Unlike usual, it wasn't time to focus on Worlds, though, with Dreamhack Dallas happening in between. G2 wouldn't even make it to the playoff bracket. They looked amazing through league play, but bombing out of the regional championship and Dreamhack within a short span was cause for concern. Would we be seeing the G2 of the past who couldn't win a series all year at Worlds, or one of the best teams in North America? Also, if anyone can decipher what Chicago said in this clip, I would love to know. Hey guys, I'm here with my boys. Just wanted to give a shout out to all the fans of G2. Hope you are supporting us at the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey for RLCS Season 7. Thanks, guys. Thank you. The format would be different from previous years at Worlds 2, starting with a three-team group stage before entering an eight-team single elimination bracket. G2's group was considered one of the hardest in the tournament, being paired with tournament favorite Vitality and new contender Ground Zero. If G2 wanted to be considered a threat to win the tournament, they would have to convincingly beat Ground Zero and have a close series with Vitality. JNAPS wasn't concerned with any of the outside noise, though, making what I still consider one of his best tweets just days before their match with the number one ranked team. But Rocket League isn't solely a game of confidence. G2 would take an early lead and put the series on match point up 2-1, but in game four, Vitality was up 2-0 with only a little over a minute left. If it's not already obvious, Vitality was not a team you want to allow to start gaining momentum either. Winning this game would take nothing short of a miracle and make a huge statement to everyone else competing. Chicago over to Rizzo. Rizzo drops it down. J Naps going for the dunk. Gets oh, he got the dunk. up! J Naps! G2 tie it up! Just out of nowhere was an innocuous touch here from Rizzo, just thrown at the net, but it catches out. Fairy Peak just far enough. Two in the middle, Rizzo Great pass there, off the crossbar. J Naps! Oh, oh, oh J Naps puts it home with two seconds left, and what a pass from Chicago to drop it down. G2 take the lead with two seconds left. Oh my, J Naps! J Naps was a miracle maker. Truly one of his best moments in a very long career, especially considering all the doubt forming around the new roster and the fact he hadn't won a RLCS series in over a year. What a win. G2 would beat Ground Zero in a much more convincing 3-1, taking first place in their group and becoming the new favourites to win. This would also bag JNAPS the Day 2 MVP for putting up such an impressive stat line during the Vitality series. It truly felt like it was finally time for G2 to win it all. Perhaps they were feeling a little too good. <laughs> Their playoff run would start with EU team PSG, and they would come out swinging. After the first two games, PSG had not scored a single goal, and G2 had eight. Then, disaster struck. All the momentum seemed to suddenly disappear, and PSG took the next two games in a row, icing the new favourites and putting the series on match point. Then... Chicago would take his turn stepping up to the plate, a 1.9 player rating for Game 5, and an impressive hat-trick to send PSG packing. Surprisingly, it still wasn't clear if changing from Crow was the correct move, because they would now be entering a semi-final matchup that nobody saw coming. Rogue, led by the man himself, would be the one standing in the way of a World Championship appearance for G2. You couldn't have scripted a match better than this. Placing top four at Worlds would have been a success for G2 but losing to their old teammate that they had recently kicked at such a big moment would be a permanent stain on the roster. Calling it anything other than a slaughter would be a disservice to the absolute beatdown G2 would deliver, outscoring Rogue 12-2 during the duration of the 4-0 sweep. Any demons that the squad had left were put to rest, and they couldn't have been feeling better entering the championship. J Naps and Chicago were averaging a 1.4 rating as well, showing how amazing the offense had been playing. On the other side of the bracket, Vitality hadn't been swayed by their loss to G2 in groups, having fought their way past NRG and Cloud9 to reach the finals for a rematch. Anyone who watched Rocket League at this time will remember how Game 1 ended, one of the largest chokes on the largest stage. Even bounce. 
15 seconds remaining for Vitality. G2, another shot off the post. JDAF can't do it. Rizzo gets bodied out of the way. They have to get out of their own half. KDOP, he tries. Rizzo at least slows him down. JDAF can't stop him there. Around the corner, Chicago, it bounces off the rim. Scrub, he grabs the ball. They have to kill it. JDAF blows it downfield. Fairy Peak, midfield. He's under one. Fairy Peak carrying this to KDOP. over Chicago, in front of the box, Kata, off the backboard, scrub, he shot just one, very big scores, that's how it is, take game one! JNAPS misses an open net, Rizzo misses an easy midfield hit, Chicago can't kill the ball, JNAPS clears it downfield instead of killing it, Rizzo and Chicago dive in, missing a clear, and then Vitality scores, six, six chances to put the game away, and six times they failed to do a basic finish, Vitality would never lose that momentum, and Chicago would fold like an omelette, having a 0.3 rating the next two games. G2 would lose 4-1. to one. If just that first game didn't ruin their mentality, who knows how the series finishes. Yet another G2 what-if moment. Clearly the team was good enough to win it all, but feeling like they should have won is a lot different from losing a hard-fought series. Nothing they could do about it now. The everlasting Rocket League tournament cycle would continue. After another day two exit at Valencia 2019, the final dream hack would take place two months before Season 8 started. This was the biggest proving time for showing the new G2 would be a consistent team moving forwards. They would make Day 3 this time, but could they show their world championship potential? Their first match would be against longtime EU rival Dignitas, who they would have no trouble taking down to move on to the semi-final. What would happen next is one of the most iconic series in all of G2's history dare I say, one of the best in the entire history of Rocket League. Enjoy some amazing gameplay for the next few minutes. The series at hand is between NRG and G2, and G2 has looked near unstoppable at this event. So much so, do we think it's enough to take down, I'm going to say, the new and improved NRG with Turbo? This is tough. So I think for G2, we talk about all of NA, right? We got Cloud9, Energy, and G2. Well, we see Energy that they improved on paper with Turbo Pulsa. Cloud9's improved on paper with Fireburner. G2's been the same old G2, but on the field, they look the most improved out of those three teams. Yeah, I mean, it's his passing, and, and when Rizzo is confidently moving forward, that's when it all comes crashing down for the other team because you just can't stop him. Early on, it might just come down to who is looking better early. Yeah. Sure, you might be able to adapt, but honestly, with these two teams, if one of them is hot and one is cold, there's not going to be a chance for the other one uh, to make those yeah. uh, plays to change it. Rizzo was not far enough forward for... To really be a part of that play. That's what we want Rizzo to be doing today. If oh. he didn't have a chance, but it's actually Garrett with an end-to-end -end shot. He doubles up his own personal tally. You know, you have to ask again, what is going on here for G2? I think Rizzo actually might have mind-gamed Chicago. Not look clinical at all, but I think their biggest problem at the moment has been in defense, running into each other, not rotating as well as they usually do. Constellation goal to finish us off here. Reposition to gather boost. In the ideal world, you're getting a 50-50 at the worst. Oh, Rizzo actually on the wrong side of the ball. And he just guides it into the middle for Garrett to finish. Just now, if energy looking comfortable against G2, we have to reconsider. Maybe energy are just on a different level now that we're in the final day of the tournament. Turbo looking to make it three safe from Chicago. The ball's still in the offensive end. Rizzo forced into a clear across his own box. NRG to have a mistake in them. And now G2 can start hunting for the next one. And is it going to come from Rizzo? It is! G2 are just wanting to get this ball into the ground by the looks of things. It's on zero. Spinning. Turbo, Turbo to Justin. Rizzo taps it down, but only as far as Turbo blows up! Chicago keeps it out! Wants to go for a double tap there. Seems like Boost is at a premium right now across our field. Rizzo taps down, Chicago goes. But so does Garrett. Follow from Jennings, oh. and Garrett lands on it! In an overtime this tournament. Will G2 and NRG beat that? Oh my goodness, Justin, multiple touches. He's still there. In comes Garrett, save from Rizzo. Ball is still in the G2 goal line, but they get it clear. Chicago off the backboard. Rizzo is on challenge! Oh, 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 we tick down ever closer to 10 minutes. This is now a free ball. Oh, Turbo can't get it past Chicago. The goal line for G2. The NRG passing, please. Oh my goodness, what are we Rizzo? watching? 
Fury. Only one team can take it. Will it be Garrett? He lays Justin. it up for Justin to finish it off. We go through this series, but they were not able to tie us up at one game apiece, and now life might get difficult. Oh. Follow up shot, Chicago tried a miracle. Unfortunately, no miracle can stop Turbo Pulsar. Dots, they would love to finish off the year with a win. NRG proving to be the most difficult competition they face, but Rizzo steps up and ties the game. And it does go down over time once again as fast as humanly possible. You're probably getting beaten to the ball. Now, j -Nabs actually gets the ball underneath the challenge and wins the game for G2. Let's take a look at another angle on this because there was a challenge coming in for Garrett, but he's gone too high. j -Nabs with the outplay. Bottom left corner secures a win for G2. Mean that their position at the top of North America changes. If anything, oh. should be on the ball. Fred Justin! Oh. You oh. cannot defend! Oh my goodness. Who's shot set? Never mind. That guy. Justin can 1v3 your team. The ball's just bounced in field and G2 find an opening. It's rare to see an uncontested ball for that long. Repulsa rolling straight through him and now this might result in a setup. Justin has put in another. So Indeed, well G2, they'll just be wishing that Justin wasn't a player for NRG. Good. Gonna make it a lot harder to win a game, especially if NRG score first. Almost half the game gone already, and there's Justin showing G2 how it's done. But silly as he just watches it roll in front of him. G2's tournament life now on the line, but Chicago's shot hits the bottom right corner. And that's the sort of shooting we've been waiting for all game long. Rizzo going on the far side preemptively for a nice early shot. Look at that positioning by Rizzo. He's over on the right, Chicago's on the left. There's really nowhere for Garrett to clear that. There'll be two wins in the series. Rizzo, 50-50 with Justin. It goes middle for Chicago, and that should do the trick. Well, you mentioned earlier on about how we're looking for... Oh, wait a second! Oh. Off the crossbar somehow doesn't go in. Man. Now Rizzo, infield for Chicago, on target! Oh. Scores! Oh. Chicago! Rizzo. Uh, wasn't able to get the right contact on it. Here's JNAPS again to make it free, and he's gonna do so! There you go. Do you believe? Well, you can see the moment Turbo Pulsar realized, wait, he's not going to move for me, j -Nabs! <laughs> What? Excuse you? Take another look at this. The latest dodge you're going to see all day. And that has left NRG completely out of position, speechless. The clear was all they needed. Rizzo winning them the game with that touch. There's no time left for NRG, but why not put another one in just to send them a message? Negative angle shot. It's actually caused havoc for G2. Infield pass. Justin oh. hits the post. And actually, have managed to hunt each other. Chicago uncontested. Oh. Somehow saved, but can oh. they reach another? Justin, double save, keeps this tied up. Here's the overtime, game seven. One more goal to send you to the grand final of DreamHack Montreal. Energy at any moment, looking to hit them on the counter. Keep an eye on the G2 third, Justin. keep an eye on Justin. He's against j -Nabs. j -Nabs times the jump out. As well as anyone can, but this is not where they want to be. Justin denied by j -Nabs. j -Nabs avoids yet another demo attempt. Now he sets up! Oh! from 3-1 down, G2 come back and knock out the team everybody was calling the best in the world coming into this event. A team who performed incredibly well on the day. But NRG are out. It's G2 into the grand final. What a series that was. Another North American team had been making waves on the other side of the bracket though. Independent team, the Peeps. In what is still considered one of the biggest underdog stories in all of Rocket League history, they would face G2 in the finals to take it all. The series started out exactly like the one against NRG2, after going down 3-1 G2 would bring it all the way back to Game 7. There would be no Cinderella story, however, at least on the side of G2. A 4-0 loss in the last game 
would finish out another amazing series and send G2 home in second place. While I will admit the peeps going on such an amazing run is one of the coolest moments in Rocket League eSport history, it still hurt to see G2 come up just short in yet another tournament this season. Still, in regards to the total results produced, this had been the greatest year in all of G2's history since JNAPS joined. The new roster was clearly a cut above, and allowed everyone to play to their strengths, which really helped JNAPS shine. Season 8 was around the corner, and the main focus was now on clearing the hurdle of NRG. Both teams had a new roster, with Turbo replacing Fireburner, and G2 had still only beaten NRG once in that Game 7 thriller since they made the switch to Chicago. It was time to no longer be the second best in NA. They wouldn't have to wait long for revenge either, since they would be facing in just Week 2 of the regular season. After an easy Week 1 victory against the Birds, where Chicago would be named Week 1 MVP, it was time to clear their largest hurdle. What happened, G2? You blew Game 1. Now, Games 2 and 3, you have to give credit to Energy. Played uh -huh. extremely well, but... You cannot blow a game one versus energy like that. Was yeah, it, with the way that it started, I was like, all right, JNAPS, all right, you've been a yeah. little quiet. Good, look to good, see. look He's good. Playing really well. And then all of a sudden, I'm like looking over at Gibbs each time. I'm like, Gibbs, this is great. <laughs> it's so week one, everyone's like, Chicago MVP. I think he just lost it in this series. I don't know if there's a way to battle back. Because game three, some poor defensive touch as well. This play right here, where he just hits it backwards, it was a miserable series from Chicago. I called it out the first time we saw NRG earlier today when they played against Birds. Turbo is just a bully on the yeah. field. I mean, yeah. just bumping, demolishing <laughs> in their faces all the time. And it's, it was so hard for G2. It was so hard for Birds. It was hard for everyone with Turbo <laughs> barreling down your face. And he got everyone uh, uh, taking him out of the play. And I mean, it opened up so much space for NRG. Mm -hmm. Well, that couldn't have gone any worse. After the throne lead in game one, things weren't even close. At least they had two easier matches to look forward to next week. Rogue and a new NA org, Pittsburgh Knights, Yet it seemed the former Peeps roster still had G2 figured out and would take the series in a 3-0 sweep. There wasn't anyone to blame on G2. Their offense had just seemed to slow down and were having trouble converting goals. As their main striker, a lot of the outside noise fell on JNAPS and admittedly what was happening on the field was a huge step down from previous seasons. They would beat Rogue at least, redeeming the season back to an even 2-2. Two and two. But then weeks 4 and 5 were a disaster. Losing to Ghost, SSG and Cloud9 was unthinkable. Not only did G2 not qualify for Worlds, they finished dead last and would have to fight back in the promotion tournament to even make league play in Season 9. Even Wilder, another team from the Big 3, Cloud9 would be joining them. The Big 3 that had ruled North America for four seasons was dead, and G2 was at the very bottom. For the third time in JNAP's career, he hit a new low. What really surprised me looking back through comments on Twitter and YouTube is the amount of people saying it was a mistake to replace Crow, even a full year of the new roster producing results. It wasn't like JNAPS was doing anything worse. The team had just fallen out of the meta. How else can you explain two of the big three just completely falling off the map? Cloud9 averaged the highest amount of saves per game since the organization formed, and G2 scored the fewest amount of goals per game since JNAPS joined. It seems like a simple solution, but they really did just fall behind newer teams like SSG and Pittsburgh Knights. In the promotion playoffs just three weeks later, G2 would at least handle business to turn things around and get back to league play for Season 9. JNAPS continued to show his ability to fight back, winning the playoff MVP. Just to try and put in perspective on how dominant they were, G2 scored 33 goals in just two series, an average of three goals per game, and if it wasn't clear, the knapsack was back. He either scored or assisted 28 out of the 33 goals they scored, highlighted by this insane goal against Cloud9. That makes Rizzo have to retreat for it. Got to find something there. But now Jane has the double touch. Does he have it? Triple what? touch! The knapsack with the triple touch! JNAPS still follows it after, and the flip! Oh my what? god! His performance was so impressive, the owner of G2 even gave him a bonus for the effort. While it was nice to end on a high note, a team of G2's caliber never should have had to play in a promotion tournament to begin with. As 2019 came to a close, they would have a lot to prove going into 2020.
After having the best year in JNAP's history be unfortunately overshadowed by a bad finish, the squad would need to rebound in the new RLCS season, Season 9. This would be a massive expansion season as well, with there now being 10 teams in the regional, 8 regular season weeks, and a massive $163,000 prize pool. Dreamhack was now a thing of the past as well, so now the RLCS seasons would be even more important to measure how successful a year was. There were a few more major events scheduled like the Intel World Open, but the major events this season were still fewer, at just six total. The first month of the new year wouldn't have one of these major events, giving G2 a very rare break to rebound and prepare for Season 9 league play. With the Big 3 falling apart last season, North America was fully up for grabs, and G2 intended to show they were the ones to still come out on top. Week 1 would start with a clean sweep yet again taking down former teammate Kronovi, highlighted by this amazing finish to Game 3. And this ball, it might drop as oh, Jnaps, he's going to pick it up. G2, maybe one more Chicago. opportunity. Chicago, shot on target, tied up at the last second. G2's done it. And into the G2 corner. Here's Jnaps. He's been dangerous oh, as of late. Up. Looking for a second he's touch. Jnaps does it off the crossbar. And G2 take down Rogue in three games. He was involved with the zero second goal, and then now he doesn't even need somebody to pass to. JNAPS takes it himself. And if you thought JNAPS tweet before facing Vitality was good, this one was great. Crow's dad had taken a low blow at JNAPS when he failed to make the regional playoffs in season eight. But JNAPS would get the last laugh, starting week one off with a bang. The hot streak wouldn't stop there either, only losing one game to start the season tied for first place at five and one. Then, as most of you will remember happening in 2020, the world was put on hold. And Season 9, outside of the regional, would be cancelled in its entirety. The prize pool was increased by another 250000 to a total of $413,000, and this regional would now determine how the entire season would be looked back on. With nothing else to do but focus back on the regional, G2 would experience a temporary hiccup, losing to both NRG and SSG before entering their last game of the regular season. They would be facing off against the Sonics for a winner-takes-all match. Winner would play second and get a bye, while the loser would end up third with a tougher bracket. G2 wouldn't have a great game, though. They would have one of their best ever, an elusive perfect sweep, not even allowing a single goal in a series most assumed would be a coin flip. JNAPS, once again near the top of NA, would get fifth for Golden Striker, and more impressively win the Clutch Playmaker Award, while also placing second in MVP voting. Playoffs would be the usual story, with G2 playing NRG in the semi-final to have a chance at winning it all. NRG had always owned G2 in the regular season, but it seemed in high-stakes situations you could always count on a close matchup that could go either way between the two. After the first two games, it certainly didn't seem that way though, with NRG taking a massive 2-0 lead. Then, in the first comeback I'm going to credit to Coach Jazzo, G2 would turn it around. It wasn't any one player greatly improving, or anyone on NRG playing worse. They just found their footing again, and looked like a different team. In the next three games, JNAPS had a rating of 1.47, Chicago a 1.76, and Rizzo a 1.05. Again with a rating of 1 representing the average, all three were popping off. The job wasn't finished yet, with still one more win to go to reach the final. Chicago actually does pop it up. Still very delicate oh. situation, and finally put away by Justin. And NRG will confirm a Game 7 here. All tied up at three apiece, it was go big or go home. And NRG just couldn't stay with it. Rizzo saw it all the way. And Rizzo stopped the moon pinch as that ball just went flying off the back on the offensive side. It's really theirs. But then, NRG, it's coming down to how they move the ball out, how they transition, and get the oh. counterattack, but it's JNAPS here. Make him go two from NRG, and 10 seconds left. It's looking all oh, G2, that eight. might be it. Chicago puts it away. Three goal lead with eight seconds left, and G2 are gonna take them down. G2 was going big, and NRG was going home. The grand final to determine for the winner of season nine was Space Station. The season coming to an end and G2 and Rizzo clearing the path. As we do wind our last few seconds down, it's the ultimate redemption story for G2 Esports. They were in the promotion tournament. They've now won the playoffs. Your regional champions, G2.
Esports. As a fan of G2, one of the best moments in a very long time. As a fan of any other team, one of the most boring grand finals ever. G2 would outscore SSG 9-2 and put a definitive statement to be the best team in Season 9. It was a very bittersweet feeling though, as let's face it, not having a world championship will forever diminish their victory. Sure, G2 would have been the overwhelming favourite if Worlds did happen, but that obviously doesn't guarantee a win, so we'll never know what would have happened. Still, the $100,000 in prize money didn't hurt, and it was JNAP's second major win. It was also the first with this roster, which felt like a long time coming with how many times they had come up just short. As a small replacement tournament for there being no Worlds, the Spring Series would be added. It would be an A-tier event instead of S-tier, with just eight teams competing in a double Elim bracket for a $25,000 top prize. But at least there was something. G2 would breeze past the first two games, yet again facing NRG in the semi-finals. The clear top two of NA were still going at it six seasons later. G2 was just unstoppable this season, and continued to show it with a 4-2 win over NRG. I wanted to include this clip of great sportsmanship as well, because it shows the respect that the two teams have for each other after competing for so long. Monster play! That is insane accuracy by G2. Turning just a very slow play in defense into a goal like that is just really so impressive. Now we are going to have a pause here as one of the players uh, wants to uh, just make sure that everything is... Uh, Okay, looks like JNAPS is disconnected from comms. Playing all that great. And then suddenly it's something switched on them. They've got the pace going. As uh, looks like NRG are going to let them have the goal back. And that's certainly good sportsmanship. Yeah, it's great sportsmanship here from NRG. You know, the rules uh, do state that in a situation like this, where a pause does happen for a technical difficulty, you do go back to a kickoff uh, for 0-0. Zero, zero. But NRG have acknowledged here that, you know, the goal was likely to happen regardless of that pause. So that's a really great show of sportsmanship from them. They're just going to give the goal to G2. NRG would beat Rogue in the lower bracket semi, who had been making an impressive run after beating G2 to give us the epic finale. Now, what would happen next is one of the worst production decisions in all of RLCS history. They brought on Landon Donovan, who had never played Rocket League in his life, to help cast the grand finals of the tournament. Nothing personal against the guy, he seemed cool and didn't mean bad, but he was clearly far out of his element. If you think casters aren't vitally important, it is hard to describe how bad this made the series. If you don't believe me, here's a clip of an incredible Justin Double Tap in Game 3. Exactly. Yeah, yeah so I played, I played indoor. Oof. And we see a goal coming in from Justin, and we'll get to that in just a moment. You no, saw the flip saying, from I played, Turbo. Uh, I played indoor, and um, that's good for NRG to get an early goal here. That'll help them. Mm -hmm. and, and in indoor, you, you do something similar where when you have possession of the ball, you want to keep the other team on the field as much as possible and not let them right back. And, not and that let is, them, uh, is, it, is it probably a tactic to wear? But the important thing was, G2 had proved they were the true victors of Season 9 and did so in truly dominant fashion. JNAPS would echo how everyone else felt. While it was amazing the roster had done so well, not having worlds to prove it was a tough pill to swallow. After a few weeks at the top with no current future in sight, Rocket League announced Season 10, officially called Season X. Looking back, it's hard to judge what they did in a positive or negative light. To compensate for there being no other tournaments, Worlds changed its format entirely. There would be three majors that would lead to Worlds, with each major having 12 small tournament brackets pictured on screen now, leading up to it. The bottom line of what this meant was that there would still be constant Rocket League, but it would be a long time before the regions would play each other again, and there was only going to be one more major event in 2020. This also meant an unprecedented six-month break between major events. Reality was this was horrible for fans and players, but I'm sure it was the best Rocket League could do in the current situation. G2 would do solid for the smaller tournaments, highlighted by winning the grid week 6 and 7 back-to-back. -back. This would have them enter the NA full major as the number 4 seed and give them a favourable position for the Swiss stage. They would use this to their advantage, entering playoff Sunday with a clean 3 and 0, oh, tied only with NRG. The first round would be with Rogue, who they would cleanly beat for what felt like the hundredth time before facing newer powerhouse SSG. 
SSG looked like the team they should have been in the Spring Series this time, ending G2's playoff run and then eventually winning the tournament. And that brought the end of 2020. Only having three major events, G2 had won two of them and placed top four at the third. A massive accomplishment. Zooming out for a bit, however, the truth is, this was a bad time for Rocket League. Season X is pretty boring to cover even just looking back on it, and I feel like the players echoed this sentiment. I mean, G2 just got top four on what is supposed to be the third biggest tournament of the year, and not a single person from the team even seems happy, and who could blame them? $8,000 for finishing third at a major would have qualified it as a B-tier event under any other circumstances, and the viewership reflected that. The reason I mention this is admittedly partially to explain why I'm not going as in-depth with Season X as with other seasons, but it also speaks a lot to the fortitude of JNAP's mentality, because this is a time where we saw a lot of the previously top teams and players fall off. Just look at how different the top six was. If you hadn't noticed, Cloud9 had several bad results and left the eSport entirely. Ghost were pretty much irrelevant now. Crow would soon be kicked off Rogue to end the year. Sonics left the top of NA just as fast as they appeared. Turbo was kicked off NRG. Fireburner became a coach. So many players retired I can't even begin to name them all. And that's only what was happening in North America. The story was the same for every region. Change was coming. The big question was, could JNAP stay on top? 2021 would start a little slow, with G2 only winning one week of the grid, and entered the winter major as the number six seed. This would mean an easy round one before having to face fourth seed Space Station Gaming. Only they would never make it that far, being upset by the second worst team in the tournament. This was obviously alarming, and Rizzo only had a player rating of 0.52, but great players still occasionally have bad games, so it wasn't cause for concern. The concern was still there, just over something else. The three-seed rogue, now led by First Killer, had lost in the second round and fell into the elimination match with G2. In a series where G2 was outscored 14-4 in games they lost, Rogue would win in Game 5 and move on. G2 was out in very last place. Once again, it was a very bad series for Rizzo, with a .54 rating. But this was their first horrible placement since Season 8, so it didn't feel like anything was wrong with the roster. Then, seemingly out of the blue near the peak of his career, Rizzo would retire. I wanted to give you an update on my position as a pro player. For me, I've been playing for a very long time. It's been nearly six years since I started and five plus have been in the competitive scene. So with that in mind, for me personally, I feel like it's very hard to find the motivation to continue playing and keep grinding and continue the competition. He would also admit that it had been planned since before the winter split started, explaining what happened at the Major. To this day, his retirement is still one of the most shocking. A very consistent player still in their prime, deciding to hang it up just after winning it all the previous season. The online era was taking no prisoners. Much like Crow, he would leave as a permanent legend of G2, and an instrumental part in JNAP's successful career. For now, Rizzo would play in one more of the regional tournaments before Dries became the third. But they cannot afford JNAP scoring here with the flip reset. Chicago with a bump on one. Oh, oh. Double tap it in. Oh, put it in the highlight reel. Yeah, baby. This is highlight reel all over. It goes up, flip reset, and double tap. Oh, put him in the freestyle challenge next time. Although Dries was a sub, he actually fit in very well to the G2 playstyle, now playing defense in place of Rizzo. So while he wasn't bad, this once again shows just how incredible the JNAPs and Chicago duo is. Even with a brand new unproven teammate, they finished top four at one of the regionals and entered the spring major as the fourth seed. This wasn't to their advantage, however, as they got into one of the most unbalanced groups in history. Even new RLCS fans know how one-sided these groups are. G2 was ranked as the second best in their half, but it would be a tough challenge to reach the playoffs. Unfortunately for everyone else, though, the Chicago and JNAPS duo was firing on all cylinders. They did lose 3-1 to NRG, in a series that wasn't very close, but sweeps against FaZe, SSG and V1 had G2 finish their group in first place. Again, not to diss Dries, but to show just how incredible the duo was playing, we can once again look at average series ratings. Dries had a 0.81, Chicago a 1.14, and the Knapsack a 1.26. He would also deservingly be voted as the group stage MVP on G2. However, 
as everyone knows in the playoffs, the importance of group stage success goes out the window. After an easy quarterfinal that wasn't as close as the scoreline suggests, they would be facing FaZe to reach the grand final. This match wasn't just important because it was a semi-final, it would also determine their seeding for the Season X Championship. Losing meant entering as the worst seed at the event, whereas a win would place them second to last, likely meaning an easier first-round matchup, and unlike the sweep during the group stage, a back-and-forth battle would occur, sending the semi-final to Game 7. After conceding an early goal, all of G2 would step up. Seconds away from being in position getting that touch. Chicago bounces the ball back out. What a play! Chicago to j -Nabs, the old-school duo coming up clutch. I don't even think they knew it was going to go off the crossbar. Two players had committed, and then there's nobody home. G2, it's a free one. And ready to make that save. Some double commits. They have lingering effects. Is Dree's going to power that one to the bottom corner? Then, for the grand final, North America's finest were at it again. Both teams had been playing for over seven hours, were tired, and wanted to finish the season off with a massive win. In a series where it seemed G2 was never going to score more than one goal, they finally got two in a Game 5 victory to send it to Game 6. Tied up yet again at one apiece, the grand final would head into overtime. Again, Justin, so focused, always ball control, oh! pass into the middle, oh! here's Squishy oh! Chicago! What a recovery! G, the last man standing here for his team, he'll get one, one, oh! one, gets dunked, oh, into the no! box, Squishy! Oh! No, Drees misses an open net! And otherwise, G2 had him dead to rights. Well, they played an entire extra game of overtime here, oh, oh! Jane has a shot still wide! As we go into our squishy. third period, here's Squishy to win what? it all! No! Blocked by Chicago, you gotta be kidding me! Time to maintain pinpoint oh. perfect oh. accuracy. Oh, oh, because oh, no. Justin! Six saves in this game. That miss from Drees might be the reset oh. button in NRG. Oh, We're looking for passes, That's Squishy! Game. That's the series! Yes. Oh, Squishy puts it in, finally the mistake opens up 10 minutes and 22 seconds into overtime. After the longest ever overtime in a grand final, G2 would finish the final major of the year in second place. While it was nice to go out on a high note, G2 would be entering the NA Championship as the fifth seed and had a very long road ahead of them. The Season X Championship would also serve as another example of a test that didn't work out very well, as the five-day single elimination bracket would only feature one match from EU and NA per day, and G2 being fifth seed instead of sixth didn't even matter. The reason for the new change was the matches weren't just one series anymore, but a best of three. For the first two rounds, the series would be best of fives for a potential 15 games, while the rest of the bracket would be best of sevens for a potential 21. This was bad for viewership retention because the matches just weren't paced well anymore. Matches that a team won cleanly would still take roughly 90 minutes and close matchups would last as long as three and a half hours. G2's first matchup would be against FaZe, but it wouldn't play out like their most recent matchup. After a 3 1 victory in the first series, J Naps would have one of his best performances ever. In a series where four out of the six players on the field wouldn't even score a single goal, J Naps would lead in every single statistical category except assists. His performance is especially highlighted by having a 1.79 rating, while the second highest player in the lobby had a 0.92. Next, G2 would take down Rogue in a 2-0 victory as well, capped off with a reverse sweep in the second series, then the semi-final everybody was looking forward to, G2 and NRG. Unlike their previous two matchups, this would be a close series, perhaps even too close. In a matchup that would last well over three hours, NRG would beat G2 2-1. With a game total of 10-9, this sent the squad home in the semi-finals, just one day away from making the final. The tournament overall finished as one of J Nap's best, finishing only second to first killer, who only played half of the games J Nap's did. Looking at the bigger picture, it was unfortunate to end the season as the second best team unable to beat NRG yet again, but the real victory was that the tournament meant likely the end of the online era. Now with a presumed multiple month break before season 11 would start, the GOAT would take some time for himself returning to his favorite side hobby of fishing, and weigh his options going into the next season. While the knapsack was content to stay on G2, it did seem the old duo was trying to find a new third, with Shift reporting that the team tried out first killer. However, no roster change would go through, and then three months later on September 15th, 
the RLCS 21-22 season was announced. They were considered that as big of a winner scoring. Oh my! Trying to make that save happen. Shad though, make it up for it here! What a shot! The boring era of Rocket League was gone, and international competition was back with even more regions. The system of three majors that led to the World Championship were here to stay as well, which abolished league play as we knew it. This also meant there would only be one World Championship per year instead of two. Looking at the short term, 2021 would unfortunately end without the return of a traditional major, with the full major having no crowd before things fully returned to pre-COVID. Although it didn't involve the players, G2 would make a roster change, bringing on Sathu as a coach while Jusso changed into a manager role. With brand new confidence and majors to look forward to, the squad was back in form and producing expected results. Placing top eight, second place, and then a game seven win to take it all in the third. You. I'll go, get out. Yeah. 10 seconds. I'll go next, I'll go next. Get in a boost. Yeah. Nice, good bump. I'm getting I'm out. Faking, faking. Yeah. Okay. I'll go next. 50. Let's go! Oh my go. god. Go. It's okay. Go. We did it. Fucking go. But we did it. It seemed vintage G2 was back with a new roster. Like Chicago said, it had been 18 months since G2 had last won an A plus tier event, making it a much needed confidence booster. We also had this great moment with J Nap's cat. Hey, she's well. I'll tell yeah. you when I. He's I'm in right. now. Okay. My cat. Right, okay. I'm sorry. Bye time. I'll, I'll I can't. Dripped out and ready to go. It was time for the first international major. The format would be a Swiss stage, so winning three games would send G2 to the playoffs, and three losses would send them home. Entering as the NA second seed, their first matchup would be against a team from one of the added regions, Sandrock Gaming. But everything would go horribly wrong. Already losing two series to two minor region teams could not have been a worse start. After battling back with two victories over Tokyo Verdi and Envy, G2 would have yet another brutal loss in their final series of the tournament to be sent home. While on the surface, finishing ninth isn't horrible. With their recent results, not even making the playoff bracket was an unacceptable loss for G2. And as a sobering reminder, it had now been over four years since J Naps last won an international event. The average Rocket League career doesn't even last close to that long. So while G2 admittedly were the victors of Season 9, not having worlds to back it up just wasn't the same, and it seemed like the team was on a massive dry spell. Heading into 2022, it felt like G2 needed to lift a trophy. 2022 would start off with the most controversial week in all of G2's history, and it doesn't even come close. In a trade between G2 and Envy, Atomic would be joining G2 in place of Dries. While he may not be on the same tier as some of the past G2 legends, his mark on the team is undeniable, and I'd recommend reading a very heartfelt twit longer that Chicago wrote about how great of a teammate he was by copying the link on screen. Personally, I was very excited about this move, but when checking the general reaction, most people felt G2 had changed right after starting to have great results. As an example, watch this segment before the first NA tournament. Three, two, one, let's see what you got. What are we getting here? We got four, five, nine... Four. <laughs> Yo, Gibbs, bro. You gotta Gibbs, go, bro. Gibbs, no, no, Gibbs no, are no, you no, good, bro? No, 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 no. Are you, you gotta good? go. Gibbs, this might have been the worst trade of all time in North America. It's one are tournament. Atomic is better than Drees. I think everyone knows that. 
How do you not rate Atomic better than Dreams? I do not Atomic understand. Atomic is going to be the reason that G2 roster is destroyed, okay? They had a, 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 a play style. They had a system with Dreams. That system sure. is gone. They bring in Atomic because they think, oh, he's doing so good on Envy. Bring now in talent. I say bring in as much talent as possible, and you'll figure it out eventually. Yes, you heard that right. Just after being traded to the team, it had already been dubbed as the worst trade of all time and the beginning of G2's downfall. Clearly, they didn't know about the knapsack. He had also just eclipsed five full years on G2. J Naps wasn't just a player for them anymore, he was the face of G2 Rocket League, and the results were pretty instantaneous, winning one of the three tournaments on the back of this incredible J Naps save in the final game. Done. Nice. Any, okay. He's there. Nice, nice. save. Just stay behind. Just stay behind. Yeah. Just stay behind. 12 and net. Nice. Okay, go. Backward go. 8. Backward He's 8. Backward 8. I'll go. Backward eight. I'll can't, go. Can't. Okay. I'll go first. I'm 40 here though. Over me? Yeah. I'll go early. Let's go! Let's go! Nice. Good dude, stuff, nice. boys. Good oh, shit, boys. Oh my Bro, god. Guys, you guys are so fucking oh good. God. You guys are so fucking good. It's so good, good to play shit. with you guys. Dude, I'm so nervous at home. Good job. Why? Dude, I started nuts. missing, bro. Oh my so good. god. Holy fuck. That Thank you so much. The results would place G2 firmly in the second seed behind only NRG. However, they were not any better than the recent split with Dries so the average prediction placed them around the top 8 range. I personally was going to be attending this event and was concerned about how they would perform in groups, having to face the recent fall major champions BDS to make the upper bracket and crowd days. Still, the outside noise now behind them, all that matters in Rocket League is how you perform. It was time for G2's first in-person event in over 30 months. Once again, this is our second gameplay chapter. So if that's not for you, use the chapter guide in the description. Welcome to the Winter Major. Get up and get loud! It's game day live from Los Angeles for day one of the Winter Major of the Rocket League Championship Series. We've completed the fall, we've completed the winter split, and now it's time for the LAN at the end of it all. And for the first time in two years, we have fans back in the stands Ooh. happening this weekend for playoff play at YouTube Ooh. Theater. We could not be more excited. I'm your host, Wave Punk. I got Gibbs beside me as always. And look at who else I got here. We got Daz and we got Bates on the desk. How's it going, T Bates? <laughs> Woo! I'm already! What is what a major wave? I'm so happy to be on this desk, Gibbs. Nice to see you as well, Daz, when you already not see you all the time. I hope everybody's <laughs> ready for the show we're about to put on. Let's get it started. Off with the group stage here for the first two days. Every one of these teams divided into four groups. They will play round robin through those groups. You can see down there in group D there, Sandra Gaming do not going to be participating. So there's only three teams there in group D moving forward. But the thing is, is you want to be in the top three. The bottom team gets eliminated in the group stage. The top three qualify for the bracket that begins on Friday. The top team of the group will advance to the top of the bracket. They will have an extra life in the double elimination format. Everybody else starts in the lowers. So that round one matchup going to be brutal. We'll see which teams get the bye there. In the threat here, <laughs> Evil Geniuses, G2, BDS, Team Secret. The reigning major champions in BDS here. Let's take a look. This it looks like everyone's got it written one. down easy. here. Yep, Flip yep, them yep. around here. I got BDS. We got two BDSs and BDS. G2. G2, Bates. I got the BDS. camera on me. Are y'all mind? BDS? Are you out of your mind? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The full, yeah, the the full major, major champion. In a store, we're shit. This, this is where Chicago's from. He's from LA. He's got the home crowd behind him. And then eventually, they, when they, once they get there, this is G2's land. They picked up Atomic from the machine. And yeah, BDS beat and, them somehow. And, and did you so, see him at the major? They were terrible at the full major. Atomic, Atomic was terrible. At the, at, he was At terrible too at the full major. Nah, man, and Dries was carrying them at that major, and they get rid of him. So I do not trust G2. I can see them coming last in this group. Oh my oh, god. god. <laughs> <laughs> I, can see it. I think there is more of a world that they come last than they come in first. They are not being wow. BDS. They are not being BDS. Honestly, it feels really good to be back in LA. It's my hometown. I grew up here for 18 years before I moved to New York play at Rocket League full time. We came to LA a couple days early. We took a quick little boot camp just to get situated. Uh, we have a new teammate, Atomic. So we just wanted to get friendly with each other and just start playing, practicing. It was really nice, it was refreshing, and I think it's gonna help us a lot.
Sweden was honestly just a little bit of a rough time. G2 are under pressure. They've got two players gone. They just have to turn it on. Net players are now starting Whoa! to return for G2, but it wasn't enough. And Sanro Gaming tie us up. One thing I really learned was that um, you need to try and keep the air lighthearted, which then correlates with results. So G2 will quite happily take it. Sandro, they don't want to go there. Ahmad! I've been hyping these guys up for years, but even I thought G2 would be too much for them. Hopefully this major, we bring a better G2, a better Chicago, a better everything. But keeping the good team environment is definitely the main thing that I think we've changed from Sweden. Working to get to the LA major has been very tough because North America is very competitive. Um, it's been a lot of work, a lot of hours with the team by myself to make sure that we can qualify for the major. And I'm super happy and super proud of us that we did. We're just trying to show improvements from Sweden and just build a bigger foundation and a bigger base for ourselves going forward into future majors and worlds. So we're definitely here to try and win some games for sure. We didn't see the real G2 over in Sweden, but rather in LA, we're going to see the real G2. Let's get this. Oh, 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 oh. Nice idea, pass to Ivan, shipped over the top. JNAPS is tied up, and that's a perfectly placed Catalyst top right corner. Atomic has a free ball, takes the shot, but Ivan's there for the block. G2 have not left this in. Can Chicago do it by himself? Do himself. He can! G2 tie up the game. Bring out of the net, but they have kept it within arm's length. That's all you ask for. One goal, you can score at any time. Evil Genius is getting bumped out here. Ivan gives up space, and they're going to get scored on. Trying to get rolling. It's tough to stop them, and so I wouldn't be surprised if they come out here, pop six, seven, eight on target, and how about they just open it up? Meanwhile, G2. Oh, they got to make that oh. save. It's a good save. Follow up blocked out as well. Catalyst shot in, and we got a tie up game. That one towards JNAPS. G2 been playing off the wall. Here's Ivan looking for a follow up touch. Chicago puts that in midfield. Catalyst. Backboard, straight uh. down, Catalyst <laughs> scores! EG are running it up! You said recognizing the deficit and the advantage that they had and continue to press one second on the clock. That one's going to touch the floor. Evil Genius is going to tie up the series. And so they want, you know, it's much more of a risk here. As Atomic goes up, will he find the double? Oh. Atomic! Oh. Explodes for G2! Oh my goodness, look at him dot this in between three defenders. Notices the unprotected backboard. Boom! That's so in the middle. perfect! <laughs> JNAPS immediately was stretched back, and now EG, there's a demo. Can Rizek score this? He can! And you look at this, EG gives G2 a taste of their own medicine. Challenge there. JNAPS up. JNAPS with the shot, and it's just off. He gets a bump, oh, one, two! Oh my goodness! Oh my God. To the loo! <laughs> Atomic gives G2 the lead! Does EG Drop have a drive down. here? They're moving upfield. Rizek tries, and can Ivan reach it? Does Whoa, have it on the hook, but it. drops it. And a little bit. Catalyst, wow, got the 50 on that ball. But Atomic, still trying for JNAPS. JNAPS, off the backboard. He has it! <laughs> Double to the top left! JNAPS, a shooter! Could you ever doubt it? Of course! Jacob Knappman gonna deliver another one into the opposition. Just need to make the right play. Ivan, good 50. Good 50 again. Catalyst, going for oh, the shot, come. he finds it! Tied up game! But the clear comes out from JNAPS. Now Rizex has to slow down Atomic. Atomic will get the ball. Oh. Pass! JNAPS! Shot! Oh. In! G2 in and four! G2 versus Team Secret. Knight, he had a couple good looks against BDS last time. Look out for him to find some breakout oh. opportunities. Oh. And in fact, Math will pick up the first goal. Team Secret strike first. Can't get the touch. Good stop there. Now Atomic on the ball. You see JNAPS moving upfield, looking for the demo. Does get a demo. Is that open? Of course it is. It's the G2 special. One up high again. Chicago will play it across. This is a good look for Secret. They've gotten a few nice touches, oh. and that one's into the net. Sadness wins the challenge completely. And field for more than five seconds. But there was some good pressure against G2. A secret, looking pretty decent, but G2 wow. are so good at striking back. Atomic puts it to the top shelf. Is it for secret? Because they shut down the offense. Knight trying to push that ball out, but Jane is waiting for it. Another demo by Atomic. Oh. Two demos! Deletes the whole team! Chicago got the goal! Jorby, say it with me. As soon as you see Jane coming in for the demo, Toodaloo! Yes, sir! <laughs> G2!
do it. Secret keeping up. that ball in the air. Zero second drill. Whoa, 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 he whoa. lost the touch. Got the got that one. I think that's gonna drop. G two will take game one. And when it when Achieves was talking about that high risk, high reward playstyle with Atomic, is there really that much risk? No. As they look like they're about to get one, that's JNAB's right off the kickoff. Versus Chicago off the ball, but gives Atomic a free clear. Chicago's unchallenged in front. Oh, it comes off the crossbar. There was a blue trail. Math must have got a touch. It doesn't matter. Atomic puts the ball in the back of the net. With four goals for G2. 32 seconds left to go. Merely a formality at this point. I mean, the confidence is great. Sadness again. JNAP's is there. This is all the boost to get to that one, but Math has an opening. Shot and the flick is good. Team Secret got the lead. Take it away. Here's Sadness. He got oh. the roller. It's headed in. Sadness gets the insurance for Secret. And Secret forces a game four. A big moment here. They get their, I believe this is their successful. There's a demo taking Chicago out the field. You two are going to have to play with a man down. But does that matter? Does Ooh. that matter? It doesn't. Jane out to the top left corner. To push the ball downfield. Right, needs a little more control. He got the pass over to Sad. Back in front of Math. Shot to the right side. Left side. Secret. Tie it up. Drops it down. Math. Underneath Ocrens the corner. G2 trying to protect the boost. Protect the corner. But here comes Sadness again. Pass to nobody. Oh, Back oh, about the no! Team Secret head to Champions Field. Do you see the pass play? Oh my goodness. Sad gets it out to Math. Math right back to him. And Sad finds the angle. Secret say they're not done yet. Oh. Great tracking there from Atomic, but now G2 going the other direction. Atomic Woo! wins the 50. JNAPS, bang! G2 strike first. Atomic's hell against G2's offense, but the they one. need to keep this within one. Because here comes the flip reset. Atomic continues to deliver. It was one that Secret probably should have came out with. Maybe this one will happen. Night no! Goal line stop from Atomic. What a savior. He, he's a magician. How in the world does he come up with that save? He's at the back of the net. He's just faster. He's just better. Woo! G2 are absolutely clapping Team Secret on Champions Field. Oh. In Secret, they put up a good fight, but it just wasn't enough. Uh, right? Yeah, uh, BDS. It's yeah. pretty simple. Uh, BDS, I got BDS as well. <laughs> so I actually predicted Ooh. BDS to win oh, wow. the entire group. So to, to stand by my own word, I have to predict BDS. Uh, G2, <laughs> let me tell you why you took Atomic off the machine. You added up to re you added a re -wall. <laughs> And then Jacob Knappman, J. Knapps of Chicago, one of the greatest dudes of all time. They're, they're going to absolutely perform. You got one of the best coaches in the game right behind him. All you, I want the whole entire world to go with BDS. You're all going with the soft pick, the favorite pick. But I'm telling you, G2, they're underrated. I went in this confident, calling the best team in North America. And I'm about to prove they're the best team in North America. Moving the squeeze of the B2, BDS advice. And the litmus test for G2 early on does come from the defensive end. How many attempts will it take before they're able to read the shots from Mark Bayet? He's securing a top corner a shot with the goal as well extra whipping on the back that's a great play by chicago immediately gets downfield to meet the rebound gets the corner boost instead and just i doubted the dreams move i've been proved so unbelievably wrong with that because atomic is a player that just makes g2 better and chicago too. A demo in the midfield, extra removed for three seconds. As JNAPS gets nothing, Monkey in round one, he gets the third. Uh, figure out what exactly a team is going to do, how they've been winning, and they'll just download them and figure out what the problem is. Atomic though, with the long shot, four goals for G2. But can extra get anything from this? Not quite enough. Atomic though, starts to continue that push from G2. Great read off that backboard. So much speed. A, rel a relatively routine look from G2. They were unable to answer with, but hold on a moment. Oh! How? 12 seconds to go. BDS, they get one push and they get it now. Monkey Moon, chance to go up for one. Dust bump, something out of the way. Extra on target, but the bump doesn't find its way in. Instead, G2 stays solid, they stay strong, and they secure game number two. Bumps on the backboard are just beautiful. Atomic parking in front of Monkey Moon, saying, you're not getting to that ball. There is no way I let you through. I'm out in the end, half the game gone, and G2 well on their way. Oh, oh. my god! and the group. They got the possession off the kickoff, and G2 do it yet again from the ceiling, Chicago. So much boost burn on this extension, the center to j -Naps. the oh! shot from j -Naps. tie game, G2! Steal from Atomic as well, just so perfectly positioned, able to take it away, and although BDS do continue this play on so little, that it will be BDS with one extra touch, one extra kill. 
who send it to a game four. Sent down, and BDS are ready to receive it. Monkey Moon to start off the scoring instead. Saved away. Make he tries to go for the pinch as well, and the doink over the top. Great demo save, Monkey Moon up for the double, down for the kill! Away by Atomic, but how far will this one get out towards midfield? Well, luckily, JNAPS does oh. get the extra touch. JNAPS for a dunk, JNAPS for the tie goal. BDS have been reading it. A flip towards the backboard, extra touch right back down. Anyone else for BDS there? Yes, Monkey Moon finding the third goal. BDS and G2 will go to Champions Field. On the defensive end, Atomic, oh my, Oof. what a dunk that could have been. JNAPS in a position, no center, the fake to Chicago. Scorched Earth protocol, Chicago opens up game five. And he shouts it from the rooftop. That's uh, just great extension from Mark Bayet and leaves off Atomic again. Falling a little bit too far off. Of Even with zero boost, he has Mark Bayet there. Blocked, overtime, game five. Mission. That's a long touch. That's extra up and extra head boost on target. Save. He can't score though. Mark has to reach in zero. He picks up the corner hundred. Atomic to shoot top corner, but instead extra. Atomic downfield won't find anything. Time and time again, these shots come in and they've been working throughout the series. So why change it up now when you're on match point? Jaden, top corner is able to deliver BDS their first. Ever international loss on the biggest stage in the world. I see an EU, no EU up oh, there oh. right at the moment, man. You got V1, you got SSG, and you got that boy. You got them boys, G2. It has been 832 days since Garrett G finally lifted that trophy in Madrid. 27 months since we welcomed the Rocket League community in through our front doors. Over two years since we've had a proper land championship in front of our family. What you're about to see this weekend, this is special. This is the product of 27 months of hard work, dedication, and perseverance. This is the RLCS Winter Major. This is the YouTube Theater. And this is Rocket League! And a rematch as well from the Fall Major. It is a rematch indeed. It is a kind of a different situation. We know we have Atomic now and G2, a spectacular player. But Furia did it before. They won that match against G2. And they are here to win it back again. Io trying to get back to it. No help though as Chicago to Atomic. Can uh -oh. he get back? They need this third person to put this one on the reset. And corner G2 will open it up. Tap as this is not quite going to find its way onto the floor yet. Yanks not able to get a hold they of might. it. Kyle cleanly. Solid catch. Atomic should just kill that. Well controlled. G2 going to fend off a Fury counter attack. Yeah, confident in the way they've been playing. They want the respect. And I think they've earned it here. And a big win over G2 would help that as there might be a double tap coming. Guard puts it down. He pre-jumped him before he even knew he was going to hit it. What a read from Atomic, and then he dunks him again. G2 <laughs> able to tie it up. It is threatening here in this corner multiple times in Furia. Big long clear here. Here's a shot on target. Mm. Kyle able to tie it up at halftime. Gonna, be ha gonna have to be more creative mm. if they want to break that midfield line. Challenge after challenge. Yanks here. Boost to work with. Ooh. Flip reset. The Ooh, pass is no. over. Ooh. Card is there. And Furia take the lead. Uh, Brown, Furia, nice clear. Still gonna be up. <laughs> Gentle. <laughs> Chicago really making sure Easy. he didn't drop that. Easy. 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 Now they kill Easy. <laughs> but not quite enough. Until the last 30 seconds, though. Until the last 30 seconds, okay. That's fine. They didn't score. Oh, there you go. JNAPS' time. It didn't see Atomic there before it was too late. G2 pushing wow. back the other way. Decent oh, metal pass, high. and it's going to tie up the defense. Here you need to be careful they don't get too aggressive, because now they're going to be out of position with not a lot of boost, and they're going to wow. rip it to the back corner. What a save. Plays from G2 are coming on, and they're coming very handy. You see how he opened all the space right there. I mean, Yax yeah. wasn't able to do anything against Chicago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh what a free flip. Up. Okay. Put it in your own net. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Two. You gotta be careful with those clears because you definitely want to get the ball out of the net. Watch it. Oh, oh yeah. my god. Opportunity away. A minute left. Fury really gonna try and push as hard as possible now. Don't want to be down 3 1 in the best of seven. And here's a chance for Yanks looking for a little oh. help. And oh, oh no, not quite. 
wall. Aaron turned away by Atomic. Still another chance. Oh, wow. No! G2 gonna knock it down. Hey. I mean, those follow-ups are crucial right now because, you know, you got him. Oh my god. Oh my god. Get it. The follow-up. The follow-up. I'm telling you. <laughs> you is. need someone there. <laughs> Fighting for it, but couldn't quite get command. Pushed off the backboard. j wow. Naps has to contend with Yanks in the net. Now, Chicago, where do you put it? To yourself. Oh, Just geez. misses the double tap. Follow-up wow. from G2 and Furia holding strong. <laughs> and even if the follow-up couldn't always crack the goal line, did an excellent job of at least forcing G2 wow. to play oh. some defense. And how about one more for the row? G2 on the board. Really nice job here from G2 on the approach. They gave up a little bit of space on the challenge. Wow. Decided what to see if they can handle it. What a read is right. Just need one with time yeah. left on the clock. It was in one. Anything's possible, and they may have something here. Cards up. There it oh, is. And oh, what? Are you kidding? Denied, and that was a fantastic play yeah. from them. Space was given over, and they they took advantage. But G2 on the goal line. Oh, now another shot man. comes through. It's J Naps again. A hat trick for him. <laughs> They're gonna take this series, and G2 off. Naps. How are your emotions right now, man? You just had a great series against Furia, arguably one of your best series of the entire tournament so far. Talk to the people. Do you want me to hold it or? Uh, if you want, I may. It's your yeah. show. Okay. I mean, I'm super happy. It's been two and a half years since we had a crowd and I'm just happy to be here, honestly. No matter how good we would have done, I'm just happy to see all of you. Listen, Naps, there's no BDS now, there's no Dignitas now, there's no NRG now. Reeve had a pre-game interview, or media day actually, talking about y'all have no competition, y'all added Atomic, Massimo right there, baby. Is G2 going all the way? Talk to me. Oh, we're going all the way, baby. <laughs> Oh, so much stuff we're gonna chat about, and these these matches are gonna be exciting, guys. Chat, wow, wow, that is terrible. Yeah, that is terrible. The chat, you chat. had the flag, no. you had the, the G2 jersey. It didn't matter, baby. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Chat, we're gonna be saying hashtag base never wrong when we come back. You're wrong today. Yeah, you're gonna be wrong today. No, I'm Guess not gonna what? be wrong. It's time the yapping you is lost done. All your PlayStation has honestly been a team that's been very surprising. I think one thing I'm really impressed by is their mentality. I feel like G2's best strengths are they play really fast and they pass a lot. It's going to be a tough one, but um, I think we're going. I do think we're on our A game right now, and we're definitely a team to be watched out for. I'm not going to say we're best in the world, but I would definitely say keep your eye open for us. What makes us better than G2 is our control. It's going to be a fun match. Wish you the best of luck, but I think we're going to take it. Good luck. A rough start in this land, but after they had those uh, first two losses, they have looked incredible to, throughout the land. So uh, it's all part of their defense. Oh my God! Watch it! Oh, there he goes. Yeah, no. Push towards net and Jane apps with a boost deal as well. Really trying to start to pin in Space Station on the opposite side. Chicago with a shot, top left corner. We're all tied up. up. Here for G2, and it's Ooh. going to be a tough series. As you've seen, very low scoring. That one came down. Atomic's not going to get the read of Chicago. Light shot as Space Station are able to turn it away. Another shot comes through. Ooh. It's going to sneak by. And G2 able to go back the other way as they threaten the shot on target. The ball, zero second time. It'll be G2 to take game one. Naps. Big clear from him. Atomic just being a nuisance on that space station side. Here's a back post shot from Chicago. Oh, He'll slot it to the left side. Go <laughs> and a huge shooter for G2. Here comes Daniel. He'll just push wow. it. Oh, top wow. shot for Daniel. You don't exactly know what he's going to bring in there. So you're always on the expected level. Oh, is it uh -oh. oh no, Chicago! Please. What, bro? I mean, I don't know, get an air dribble from from the sidewall where they can try and get a little extra space. Oh, oh my God! Everyone, huge save from Arsenal. The audience counts them down Ooh. here in Game Two. Space Station got to go the length of the field. Oh it's my a good gosh. pass out to Arsenal. The oh shot my there. Gosh. The bump is there, oh. but G Two denies once again. That they've had. They like to keep the game at their pace. G2, I think, is a team that really wants to run downhill and get that offense in perfect oh. rotation. There's Shane Apps to the left side. And Space Station in the hole. You, you get the demo, you get the player out of the way, and then it's Chicago mm. just doing what Chicago does best. Wow. I mean, this is it. Space here is G2 able to work with it. Space Station, though, clamps down and big clear back down the sideline. Here comes Space Station. A shot, surely. Tokyo oh. Reynolds puts it away, and this one's not over yet. But that was a tough shot, and G2 
up 3-0 in this series. Are you able to oh. stave off G2 for now? They just don't have enough boost to really get up and get aggressive, Ooh. but they're going to find a transition out of nowhere. Okay. One is put on the tag. Low boost for JNAPS. The pass Ooh, over Comics there. Early. Here to receive it. Ooh! Oh, it to the top shelf! Chicago, and that touch not hard enough. Space Station throws it downfield. Space Station gonna force another game. I have to wonder if that continues to be the approach again. Oh, and G2's uh -oh. gonna score off the rip. That's tough. That is not <laughs> what you want if you're a Space Station. Chicago as Daniel. Be able to win that challenge, but G2 not done with him quite yet. JNAPS has help to the right side. That's a great Ooh, shot! Wow. And G2, what a beautiful play to double their score! On securing their own boost as well. They don't want to give Space Station any extra avenues of finding oh, success. Daniels through everybody. No it. one's in time. The demos have come through one way or the other. Bracket. Oh, Atomic faking that one. Oh, a follow up for oh, Chicago oh, off the post as well. Again. Both hitting crossbar. Fence. Just hanging on to the play, trying to get the read. Love how they're playing a little bit slower. Oh, oh they got it! What a save! Oh, what well, Arsenal, Jackson. Arsenal, Daniel. Can he be the hero that Space oh. Station needs? He won't. And Space Station going down to G2 as they move on to the final. We started out way in the back there. Team K still facing off against NRG before wow. they were in YouTube theater. They knocked them out in five games, and now they have taken down every single North American squad save one. Queso versus G2 is our grand final. We came from the bottom, but we got to the top. So far, the tournament's been great. You know, an insane experience, especially now with the fans. We were nervous at the start, but you know, now we're ready and we're hyped. We're ready for championship Sunday. I'm so proud of the boys to be championship Sunday, first ever land. Insane. We've definitely exceeded our expectations, 100%. Ceiling, put a little force behind it. That's a big demo wow. and a quick follow up. <laughs> oh my God! Toyo <laughs> takes the man out. Rise takes the shot perfectly in tandem. I think. Playing online is something that very few get to experience, so to be here together has definitely helped us build like a really good one as a team. Kaysel still threatening on their side. Motor for Vatira, pumps top right. Oh, that is three for Kaysel. Devastation the other way. We're very ready. We know that when we play our game and are confident, we're the best team in the world. To the NA fans, sorry, but we're gonna have to take the boys out. a team that hasn't played in front of a crowd and could have dealt with a lot of nerves. I thought we handled it honestly almost as well as we could have. Honestly, I'm super proud. We had a couple of hiccups, but that's going to happen. But I thought we bounced back after each loss really well. So I think every day that goes on is getting better and better, and that's honestly something I like to see. Free to put a lot of extra pressure on G2 now. Tomic will just take some extra space with him down onto the blue side as... Oh! Three words to describe this major, G2 showing up. Uh, this major's been amazing, the crowd for a change in the past two years, it's been really good. I think our matches have been harder than we expected. The minor regions are really showing up big, so. Really right now, Furia is doing a great job of nullifying the teamwork yes. uh, from G2. They're gonna need one here, JNAP and G2 on the board. Shout out to all the G2 fans that stuck with me for the five years I've been on G2, and I hope we can take it home for you. Will that be their downfall? G2 have to look for those counter-attacking chances. They have to look for the bumps. And they gotta get someone in net because Queso have just opened the scoring. Player for Team Queso briefly. And there's a chance, but Matira's all over it. G2 circle back around. Next shot's coming in. Joy is off the goal line. But another ridiculous save from Ryan. Chicago's got no boost. There's nothing he can do. He was hoping it would drop down, but Queso take game one. I guess this is what half-court Rocket League looks like. <laughs> The thing is, like, Gaysno don't actually have a lot of boost for a lot of that attack. And they are going to step too far forward. G2 sniped the long shot. I mean, he, he's got underneath the ball to pop it over the third man. No, actually going to be a counter oh. kickoff goal. Rice, Ooh. no, going to get it past JNAP. But luckily for G2, the wall clear is much harder to hit than just a ground shot. Gaysno not able to connect with it, but that's another open net. Oh. Huge mistake from G2. Bluff on what should have been a power shot. Something G2 have been 
hitting every single time this weekend. Oh, oh, oh they get one! And Jade has Jade no credit for it. I mean, <laughs> push. All of Queso trying to move up on this. Latira got it, but she too tied the spear. It's solid. Now on sending across, Latira is able to take it out. Lovely control by Vatira as well. But the bumps from G2 are continuing to work. Atomic there for the first goal. Being up so high, so early on that challenge. And it's best. Oh, somehow getting around the first deflector. And Vatira what? able to. 50 by Choyo. G2, quick shot. Saved oh. by Vatira. That save actually goes clear partially. Oh. Gives Joyo time to get the third save. They still need to do more oh. though. G2 have got the ball stuck. All right, here comes G2. Queso trying to get that ball down. And they do. We go to overtime. Might be dangerous off the ceiling. And it's taken away by Rise. But it's still oh. G2 ball. Wait, nope. Atomic had to rotate back around. Just a bit of a mishap. And that might be Queso's door in. That one off the bar. Oh, and it's, oh, up. it's open. Go! Oh. Queso win. On midfield. Joyo, and let that ball drop for Vatira. Vatira flips it over. Joyo in front, actually moving back. Wise, far shot, right side, goal. And Joyo could actually get to this touch. 46 in the tank. Flip reset to keep going. Oh, Joyo squeezes Whoa! it in, and it's going. Raymond's coming, though, and Vatira has to turn around. <laughs> what did we just witness? They can't even get the ball away from their box right now. Popped up again. It's Rise winning another 50. It's Joyo keeping it going. It's Joyo destroying G2's defense. Queso up by two. Team Queso have ransacked their way through this bracket. Chicago gets a goal at the end of the game, but it's Queso who take the win. He has been the leader, and they need some of that right now. Jane Epps has to hit something. Popped up by Joyo. The net's uh -oh. wide open. Queso, two minutes remain, and they have the lead. Oh. Taken away by Rise, has frozen on the backboard. Here they come, G2 looking for the shot. Oh, it's gone! Chicago scores! So, has been lights out when the pressure's on. G2, again, Chicago, downfield, just on two Whoa! again! Chicago! Another goal for G2! Catch and a run by Queso. Here they come, Joyo going for the bump, and it's taken down. G2 survives. He's out of position. G2 aren't able to capitalize, and now there might be a bump happening uh -oh. from Adira. Oh! There it is! Rise! Long shot goes in! The lead, why is he taking that risk? Oh wait, it's because it's Team Queso, it's Joyo, oh. and now it's Rise at the other end of the field, followed up by Joyo. Oh. What a save! Oh. Adira's gonna be there! Every time G2 shoot, it's a goal. And then Queso get the ball, and even on low boost, they somehow are able to export out those mechanics, but G2 are coming in! now. Queso, how do they respond? Rise. Getting that ball back over to Joyo. Joyo, pass it from the material. Oh! Goal! Rise! He's done it! Times of Queso looked like they were about to be defeated. How many times have it looked like G2 were about to take control? Here they come! Oh, oh my god! What is happening? <laughs> Whoa! We've got a ball game! They've done it again! Infield pass! It's something with a snipe! G2 refused to go down. Ball touches Whoa. the ground, and I don't know how this is going to overtime. Jane gets the next touch, gets kicked out of the way. Vatira drops it down. Here comes Chicago. Stay Whoa. here, going off the bar. Here they come again. Atomic, go! Oh. We're going to Champions Field. Oh, only 30 in the 10. That's enough to drop down. Oh, that's Freezing. Hard. The case of defense. Jane gets the next touch, gets kicked out of the way. Vatira drops it down. Oh. Here they come again. Oh. is one more game. Game seven on Champions Field. Brought to you by Lamborghini. Here we go. G2, one game away from winning the major for themselves and for North America. Oh! And They call him the map sack for a reason. What G2 need a goal. Jane Epps is there to answer the bell! Rise pops the ball hard, and one miss leads to a save for Chicago, but coming back, return fire! Oh! Joyo ties the game! Oh. Taken away, pass cut off by G2, time running out, here they come, Atomic, actually oh! back to... Oh! 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 robbery! Oh my goodness! A complete joke 
from G2. Atomic and Chicago both leave the ball at the worst moment. And you knew they were in trouble when Atomic was in reverse in the middle of the field. A miscommunication with Chicago. A heartbreaking end, and now the final chance. G2 have to keep this up, otherwise we're going to another best of seven. But Tira puts the ball onto oh the ground, God. and here we go. A bracket reset. For round two, Team Queso flipped the bracket in what was the most mm -hmm. uh, just unbelievable just question marks. end to a game I've seen in a long time here. Guys, I don't, I don't even know where to start. Who here. do you want to come to first? Stumpy, what, do you, what did you ahead, think man. about the zero commit at nine <laughs> seconds? Choke, zero choke, choke, commit, choke. I like that. Baby, it's just a choke from G2. That's all that was. There was the weirdest just, okay, we've got the ball two seconds left. Stop. Stop moving. Rice goes, there's a goal there, guys. I'm going to hit the ball. To as long as that goal doesn't get to them. The 15 mm -hmm. minutes could help or hurt. They have to sit there for 15 minutes and not think about that. It's G2 on their last life. Queso looking to take down the last bastion of North America. G2 have one more try. Back downfield. Queso had the better chances so far. And they will get the first goal. It's always time to be worried in this situation because, like we're saying, G2, they've made a name for themselves. You don't become the best player to never win an RLCS line in, in JNAP's case, the best player to never win a line in Chicago's case without losing some along the way. And uh, are they going to get that? Is it going to get inside their heads at some point? Are they going to start to second guess everything that they've done this weekend? And now over to the corner, oh. loose a bit, but easily killed in the final moment. Team Queso able to close out game one. The G2 are hunting, that ball taken away again. Queso get the ball safely into the corner. Here comes Atomic. Flips it off. What a goal! Vatira off the kickoff. Now have to respond. They just might. Joyo going in the air. He wants a pump. He's given the space to rise. Oh, it's in. It's out. What? And somehow G2 keep the lead. The net. Rise got one more chance at it. Gets underneath. G2 survive for now. They've done it again. They put the ball in their goal line twice this series. Oh. This time it's in their goal. Back to rise. They're going to move. Vatira. Does he want to play ball? No, he's going to pull off the play. No dice, overtime. The draw ball's been dropped. And now here come G2 on the transition. Joy will stop one shot oh! for the top corner. Oh! Gladly welcomes Atomic to win game two. There's Joy for the save. Rise trying to dive forward. Loose ball in front of the box. No one's there. Atomic again is third in a row. Joy going to let it drop. There's that patented queso leave in the air. And that shot oh, going to be denied. It's flying wow. back with Atomic, but it's return fire oh. for Joy. They split the lead. Oh. But still, Queso able to recover, streaking back. But I swear at times, oh! oh. oh. Back down the field and another hard boomer. Who's waiting for it? Atomic off the bar. Waiting, here comes j -Naps just after Chicago pump. And oh. Steve Rice diving in at the last second. Too much time, that's not going to get it done. G2 have taken the lead. Off the corner, still space, Rise. Getting shut down, Ooh. getting closer. Ooh, the wow. bump in the air, rebound out, weak shot, Ooh. but it's good enough. JNAP's got the catch, he's got the boost to chase it. A demo on the backside, forces Rise to make the save, but it's open. Oh, oh. Chicago missed it off the pump. But they need the goal, downfield. One more touch, going for Tira, puts it down into the ground. Queso have tied the series. Contend. They are doing well right now, but it's Queso who have got all the possession. It's Queso who are creating all the chances. Ooh. They're asking a lot of questions to G2. Oh. G2 do not have an answer. Somebody slightly out of position, but really nothing drastic that you would expect to cause a big difference. A free jump pass. That's oh. impressive from G2. Oh, the oh. He gets the dunk. Oh my goodness. G2 playing keep away. Atomic with one free jump pass and then a free jump dunk. They're seeing the future. How do you come up with it? That work. Oh, downfield. What a light touch from Chicago. Oh, and it's oh in the no. net. He forced the own goal. G and they get to that ball. Rise has done it, but it's going to drop down. And G2, one game away. Looking to tie things up and send us to two striking oh. seconds. But guess what? Napsack has something to say about it. Full team play. Chicago infield, Atomic downfield, and a brief flip from j -Nabs. For another four minutes, and it's gonna be a long four minutes. 
It will be sweet. Oh, Sterling. It will be great. And up top it gets behind it. Made by G2. Their defense will not break here in game six. Oh, that was close to another one. But actually, it's going to oh. go the other way. I just when you thought G2 were going to get a third. Make mistakes. If they're going to lose goals, at least Morse Gates will try to play you. They get the ball down. Not the best touch for Patera. Oh, devil. The it's pass. open. The goal. To win in this thing. Back again. Chicago gets the clear out. Queso trying to hold the midfield, but they've lost it. And here they come again. Oh! A goal! It's been a long journey for G2, but the time is now. They've done it. G2, they have done finally. G2 are your winter major champions. performance from G2. After a crushing defeat in the first series, they put it together in the second time around. Queso gave them a run for their money, but G2 have been oh. the best team in the world this weekend, and they will be the champions. j -Naps, it's been a long road since 2017, since G2's had a big win at a LAN. Five years later, you keep the grind up, you keep the play up. How do you stay at such a top level? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> but man, someone in the hotel asked me yesterday, what would I do if we lost another grand finals? I guess we'll never know. And with that, I think it's also a good time to give it up one last time for G2 Esports, your winter major champions. For the first time since 2017, JNAP's return to the top of the world. It happened at the exact time everyone was starting to doubt his G2-led team, and now Chicago was no longer the best player to never win an international event. Also, if the first few chapters didn't make it clear enough how impactful JNAP's was on the scene, listen to this interview that Chicago gave when talking about Atomic. That's, that's easy, that's Atomic. So, like, Atomic was basically, when he first joined, um... He was like a JNAP super fan back in the day, and we could ask him like literally four years ago in some random tournament, and he would know like what goal was scored, what car design was used in that game by JNAPs, or like in general for a lot of players too. But you can literally ask him, it'd be like a fun quiz, honestly, if you wanted to. You could ask him a random question or a random date for a random tournament, which player was using this car design, and he'll know it. So that definitely. That word goes to the atomic hands down. From then on, G2 would dominate North America, winning two out of three regionals and getting second in the last. To this day, it is still the most dominant split any NA team has had in RLCS history. I will mention as a side note, though, their loss to FaZe in the final regional is one of the most heartbreaking games I've ever seen as a G2 fan. After dropping into lowers, they would win the first four straight to get a bracket reset before losing in a game 7 OT the second series, especially since it felt like they could have won. Atomic does get the mid boost. What a Had challenge. to camp out for a while. First killer, awkward ball. Whoa. Rebound Atomic. to Atomic. Atomic sends it wide. And AJ able to clear this out. I'm curious if Atomic really wanted the pass there. He just went too far, but AJ flipped the reset, didn't get it. Phase threatening. The good clear comes out from G2. AJ. His opportunity is cut out by Atomic, but AJ looking for two! And has done it! FaZe coming out on top in Game 7! Still, they were by far the most successful team in NA, which included the Knapsack winning it all with two different rosters. Now for the first time in a very, very long time, G2 was the favorite to win it all heading into an international event. 
The format was a simple 16-team double elimination bracket, so every game was going to be vitally important. Heading over to London, it was time for... Name's Naps. J. Naps. After an easy win over minor region team gladiators, it was time for a prove-it match with Carmine Corp. Yet after taking the early lead, the two-time regional champs would be reverse-swept in dominant fashion. KC was a great team, don't get me wrong, but being reverse-swept in a game they were heavy favourites in was a brutal way to drop to the lower bracket. They had a long fight back, but if anyone could do it, it would be G2. The pressure, and then all of a sudden, Liquid just after game three, something about game three, the European teams. Oh my when god, down oh, he got a vein popping out the forehead. It's a copium overdose when they're down 2 0 against G2 EU. They just turn it up. I don't know whether they're switching controllers, whether <laughs> they're going to mom, but they're going to get some beans off toast. Regardless, they start popping off, man. You gotta give it the Liquid. I need a medic. <laughs> we got a copium <laughs> overdose on L5. G2 down, man down. Beats oh. down. <laughs> I mean, you got to hand it to Liquid. They I started do. playing phenomenal. Yeah. I got to hand it to the Young Guns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were playing they so well. Great. But I think G2 started to. We, we spoke about it earlier on about the way Moist play. It's so. And just like that, G2 was out of the major. A massive disappointment for the event favorite to be going home in just the second elimination round. If there was ever a team that could get over a bad tournament, though, this was the group. Heading into Worlds, there was no doubt that G2 would be on the grind and doing everything possible to end the season with a world championship win. One month of hard work later, it was time for Dallas. This was also the same location the Season 9 World Championship would have been if it weren't for COVID, which made a sweet revenge storyline for the then-predicted champs. Because G2 had finished as the top seed from NA, their road to the World Championship playoffs would be a relatively easy one if they were back in form. Just beating Optic and Furia would be all it took to reach top 8. Optic was a quick win, but now it was time to prove that G2 was no longer that spring major team in a series against a solid Furia roster. Season on the line, would the knapsack deliver? Furia not giving G2 space when they can, but Chicago got the break. j playing the bully! G2 on the board first! Card's gonna try off the ceiling. He's got a shot. Got a dunk as well. Yan's there. Got it over one. Card better. Off the post, the save! They're still fighting oh. for it! And it's in the roller for Card! Pressure for G2, Chicago in front, the shot goes in, Atomic bullies his way in! Here's j again, he didn't quite Whoa. get what he wanted, but he was looking for Chicago the whole way. The shot a little high, Yan in the air, denied. j in front, and it's Kyle with the goal! Furious split the lead. Furia also constantly having to keep their cameras swiveling for G2. Uh oh oh, 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 oh They forgot about Yan! Furia take the lead! So much defensive duty for Fioria. But a big breakout play. Oh no! A no! Whiff! And it's on a whiff board! Chicago ties it up! Now the breakaway! Shot! Oh. Up. It's off the bar! It's saved! Diving back! Chicago shot! Oh. Come in from Fioria! It's not over! But all in G2! They're rotating back! Cart! Does he find Yan? Yeah, the it is! Oh, oh my yeah. god! Yeah. One dump off pass for G2. There's another oh, oh, dump oh, oh. off. The demo! And Hard. the block! Has to get back to it. Another pass, another shot, and it's good! Atomic slots into the top left! With control, flips it up over one. Card wants the bump. He got him! Demolition for Card! Goal for Furia! Oh, pass out. Well, not really a pass. Actually, it is a pass. Oh! oh the goal! On the far side of the pitch, and G2 one game away from the playoffs! For that bounce, could he have made the read? We'll never find out. Oh, the oh, big oh. miss! to the whiff board. Can they do it here? Chicago drops it down. Yan pumps it by the rotation. Is it in? Oh! Oh! Right oh! the box. G2 get away with it. High in front of the box. Fioria got the pass. The shot. Goal! We go to game six. Good wave landing in front. Another shot. Oh! oh! Kyle sneaks it through. They still have, uh, you know, so far how, how good they recovered from that one. Oh! That was a nasty shot. Oh! And it's still safe. Going against Atomic? What can he do? He's gonna make it! Oh! Jaynaps is the save! 
And now Jnups with a shot. Oh, they have to do that. Oh! It was perhaps a little closer than G2 would have liked, but after three overtimes, Furia would go down in the six-game series. For another first in a long time, G2 would be facing a long-time rival NRG in the playoffs. After hearing about them non-stop for the last six chapters, you've probably been wondering what happened to the old kings of NA. Their season had been very rough for usual standards. A lot like G2 in Season 6, they went out early during winter and didn't even make spring. Still, if they could beat their largest rival and make top four at Worlds, all would be forgiven. Unfortunately for them, G2 had other plans, easily reaching the semi-finals. This is also the last you'll hear me mention NRG, because 2023 would go even worse, missing all three majors and not attending Worlds. After being the gatekeepers of NA for so long, their downfall was finally upon us. This is also the series where JNAPS passed Garrett G as the greatest NA player of all time. Everyone knew JNAPS was amazing, but it always felt like you couldn't mention him in a conversation without bringing up Garrett G. With JNAPS now having a full two more years at the top, while NRG became a bubble team, JNAPS finally got the crown. It's conflicting as a G2 fan because it was so frustrating to often come in second to them. But with NRG being such an important part of JNAPS' story, it was a little sad to see them fall so hard. However, getting back on track with the current topic of Worlds, G2 had a semi-final against FaZe to worry about. Only, they didn't need to be worried, taking them down 4-2 in a series that wasn't as close as the scoreline suggests. The knapsack had played amazing, and it was obvious that he and Chicago wanted nothing more than to avenge how Season 7 ended and get that World Championship trophy. Sure, E-League and the Winter Major were international wins, but that World Championship just meant more and would immortalise the roster in all of Rocket League history. Sadly, it would go so poorly, it's not even worth showing highlights. What hurt worst of all was watching Jay Naps and Chicago stuck on stage, staring at another team accomplishing their dreams, just moments away from holding the trophy themselves. They were still trying to play it cool afterwards, but it was obvious the loss had devastated them on a personal level. And how could it not, now being the only players in RLCS history, to lose multiple World Championship Grand Finals without a win of their own? When looking at the overall, it was the most successful season in G2's history, which speaks volumes of both J Naps and Chicago. Moving forward, they were often both in the top five oldest RLCS players, still making majors, and it's a massive testament to their hard work and dedication. The huge prize money in addition to their G2 contract didn't hurt either. With two months before the start of the 2023 season, J Naps got some much-needed time to relax and prepare a heading into the next year. When things caught up to speed, however, it seemed like we had a different G2. The results weren't horrible, but for just placing second at Worlds, it was a shaky start. Jay Naps would also make his first podcast appearance, which gave some good insight into the team. Did you, uh, did you have much of an off-season break? Obviously, you know, you were the one of the teams that played uh, the latest for you guys in BDS. <laughs> the last mm, it, We had like a two-week, three-week break from scrims, but... Two weeks off of Rocket League for me in total. Mm, I always feel like guilty. Back in touch, ranked, ranked. Yeah, I just feel like guilty. Is even if we have like a month break, it's like you have to start playing or else you'll show up to scrims super rusty. So quickly start with the Qualzo boys. Um, Jane Apps, yours was a pretty smooth uh, qualifier. Um, yeah, it was. Cruzy. Um, we were a little nervy to start, and I think it showed against Optic. Um, I think there's like a lot of times we play against teams we really want to beat and we just like start forcing plays and playing not how we want to. So I think that it was good to get the qualifier out of the way. Like we just wanted to qual no matter what. But um, I think that might be something that can uh, come back to bite us this season. And especially teams that we really want to beat, we just kind of, we play to their advantage. And I think. Um, I think even our first round against Luminosity, like we just have to relax and play like how we do in scrims. Oh yeah. The only but... thing is with me is like, do they have the personalities on their team to like change it around or no, they don't. change the season, turn the season around? Um, 
They really don't. I don't think. I mean, I was you know, say, experience like, too, JNF. So Rizzo, yeah. you guys had that bad yeah. season. You guys I came was, back yeah. and destroyed everyone. I mean, yeah, season eight. I was going to say, like, we there's, we're a few fire. conversations away from being on the same page again, but it just takes having those conversations. Yeah. What do you... like, I know for me, I'm very opposed to roster moves unless it's like you fully lost belief in winning. J Naps was now officially the oldest player to make the full major as well, and was still one of the top 10 players in the world. A work ethic like no other. On the scene and ready to go, it was time to dominate the major. Then, in true G2 fashion, they would lose both of their first two matchups against massive underdogs. However, in Swiss stage, it isn't game over until three losses, which gave them time to find their footing on day two, after a small bounce back against two minor region teams and a questionable interview. Right now with me, Jay Naps is coming on. Maybe, maybe we'll have the insight here. The, Cole wanted to know, because uh, we saw some some meta, maybe this is the difference. Taking off the shoes, is is uh, is that the difference? I mean, I keep my shoes on. Does oh. Reed, are you talking about Chicago? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, him and Rizzo have been doing it for a while. They used to do it back in the uh, old RLCS days, but me, I'm a more shoes on type guy, so I can't really speak on the no shoes meta. <laughs> Making the playoff bracket and championship Sunday, would all come down to the final series against Moist. For the final tournament of 2022, it was time to go big or go home. Make the fall major, he didn't make the winter major either, but he's made three consecutive lands in RLCS now. Spring last season, Worlds, and now the fall major. First land of the new season, and he's performed admirably at all three. And this is when it looked at its worst, G2 Esports. Run rampant on Aquadome. And right there and then, especially after this goal right here, you would have been forgiven for thinking that this was all over. I did. <laughs> I'm gonna say I gotta believe with you, that's, but that's the moment. Astral's mind double mind game. Unbelievable. And there's only one person the world wants to hear from. Lee is with Astral. G2 just couldn't quite finish the year off on a high note and left the tournament before making the playoff bracket. Still, the year was an unequivocal success for G2. Jay Naps had just started his 10th season competing under the banner and just had his most successful season ever during the 9th. As a final high note, I wanted to share some pieces of the interview Jay Naps' dad had with Shift. Every great player needs just as great of a support system and it's incredible seeing how much effort Papa Naps has put into being there to support his son. If you've been paying attention during the gameplay segments, I'm sure you'll easily recognize him from the crowd. He was also quick to shut down any of the retirement talk, now being the oldest player near the top of the eSport everyone assumed he had to slow down at some point, and rumors of his exit followed Jay Naps constantly. The question was, in 2023, could he do it again? Outside of Jay Naps' farming impressions on Twitter, compared to many of the previous years, 2023 would start off rather quietly for G2. No roster moves or drama to speak of, and things were starting to look up at the regionals. Taking top four in all three capped off by a second place at the final would give the squad momentum heading into the major. Jay Naps was also retrospectively ranked as the 11th best player in the world during all of 2022, while being the oldest player still attending events. As a testament to his consistency, there was only a single tournament all year where he finished with a rating of under point nine hundred. And continuing all the recent milestones for Jay Knapp's achievements, he was now the third player with over half a million won in prize money and was about to attend his 10th international event. Now, heading into the Winter Major, G2 officially had two of the three oldest players attending. I know I keep mentioning it, but it can't be understated how amazing it is to have multiple older players on one of the best teams in the world when the average career finishes at 19. However, after their recent relatively bad finish, at the fall major, just attending wouldn't be enough. They had to perform. It even turns out Coach Sathew had been cooking up something new for the squad. We're constantly looking to innovate. So ahead of the winter major in San Diego, we've been experimenting with a lot of different play styles, like playing like Chad's. Bro, I got it. 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 Bro, I have playing like bots. This special mod will optimize your controllers so you can play like bots. So every wrong movement will be corrected. This is wild. 
Yeah, this stuff is impossible to do. Actually, I can't really tell the difference. I mean, what? This is crazy. We even tried playing like other teams in our group, like FaZe. Crew. What about G1? Who? Overall, I think we've learned a lot, but we're just gonna stick with what we've used in the past. Okay, so let's just be way, way better at Rocket League than every other team. That's my goat right there. In all seriousness, groups would go rather well for G2, taking second in their group, with the only loss being to NA1 seed phase. Their match against G1 had been scary close, but this incredible J naps to atomic goal in game five proved they could win when it really mattered. Downfield, G2 preventing the touches. All he can do is kill it to the corner. Dorito plays oh. space, oh. and he got burned! Atomic goes nuclear! G2 take the lead! And for the first round of the single Elim playoff, a match with Ground Zero Gaming would be their first step to another championship. To happen, happened. But yes, it was what we were talking about on the desk, and we gave a little bit of hope to Ground Zero, but G2, we knew what we had with this team, we knew what they've done before in the past, and we knew how this series was going to go. G2 taking care of business here. Yeah, that was the easiest round one. I guarantee, I mean, if you really were like a betting person, that one was the one you put in because that yeah. one was... What? Yeah, 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 You're not yeah, getting yeah. any money then. Yeah, no. know. <laughs> kind of true. So, G2, OCE, you come out, you're going up against one of the best, then G2 handle business. OCE still has a little bit of ways to go in order to be able to contend against the likes of G2. This, this is kind of a bad draw, really. Like, this, this Tough draw. It's going to be hard yeah. to catch. There's something there with Ground Zero, with Absolutely. the players on this team. Absolutely, there's something there. <laughs> when you go up against G2, you gotta, you've got to bring your A game, and sometimes that's not even enough. And I think... For Ground Zero, though, there's something special with this roster. I, I do think that, you know, with the players, the, the pieces that they have, they could go further here if it wasn't G2, but Ground Zero, unfortunately, bowing out as the last Oceania representative. After that easy win, G2 was back to top eight, and the quarterfinals would present a unique challenge. The tournament favorites, Carmine Corp. Everyone knew it would be close, and G2 wanted nothing more than to come out on top. However, after a back-and-forth battle, G2 would be sent home in the 5th through 8th spot. KC would go on to win the entire tournament, and the match against G2 was the only one that was even close. G2 held them to the fewest goals, smallest goal differential, and tied for the closest scoreline. But in a single elimination bracket, sometimes the second-best team loses in the quarterfinals. Looking on the bright side of it, though, the team was clearly getting back into championship form and was likely just a few steps away from that first place spot again. With a month before the next regional, it was once again time for G2 to return to the drawing board and try again to make sure the spring major went better. Getting a little off topic, I thought this was one of the coolest moments in a while. Imagine going into work with a player's parent and the man himself shows up with signed jerseys. Just a special moment that once again shows what a great person J Naps is. When May fast arrived, and the regionals started up again, we saw one of G2's biggest downfalls. Quite there, Chicago. G2 are going to have a look at this. Now it's Reynolds. Oh, they got Jada oh! in the air! And Reynolds breaks their precious little hearts! And zero seconds! Optic don't give up! Off the ceiling! Double from Reynolds to end G2's run! Who can stop Optic Gaming at this point? They're playing on another level. Optic Gaming knocks G2 out of contention for the Boston Major. After only finishing top four at a single regional, G2 would finish eighth in the region. For the first time since season eight, way back in 2019, JNAPS would not be attending an international event. And this was all happening at a time when G2 was in desperate need of a comeback. JNAPS specifically was absolutely ripped apart. It's hard to describe the online reaction without just scrolling through Twitter for 30 minutes, but just take my word, this summarizes how people felt pretty well. There was far more to the story, however, as the Knapman house had just had an unimaginable tragedy. Jay Knapp's family home, which he had lived in for his entire life, was burned down along with almost all of his possessions. And all of this happened right before the third regional. While no one would ever specifically state it hurt the team, 
I will make the leap to say such a huge event behind the scenes had to affect how they were performing. Most players would have immediately gone to social media to use this as an explanation for the team's bad performance and defend themselves, but not JNAPS. He wouldn't even address what had happened until after the final regional to give a message of hope looking towards Worlds before thanking Shopify for at least giving him a place to play since his computer was destroyed in the fire. Just like last year, G2 was going to do whatever it took to become competitive again. While the whole world was doubting them, the squad took some time to reflect and then went to work. Between the two-month break and a multiple-week boot camp before Worlds, we were going to be seeing what potential the G2 roster had left. This year, it was going to be a very long road to the finals as well. Because they ranked fourth, they would have to fight through the Swiss bracket wildcard to reach the group stage. With confidence like this, you can't go wrong though, and with many thinking G2 weren't even going to make the group stage, they set out with something to prove. It was time for Worlds. Feels good to be here in Dusseldorf. To be here at the World Championship is really important to me. I've gotten second a few times at the World Championship and I want to finally get over that hurdle, finally win the World Championship. Overtime is looming here on Champions Field. It could not get any more tense for V1. And the bank is open with five seconds left. want revenge from last year where we got second and I don't think we'd be satisfied with anything less. After an easy round one win against Limitless, they would be reality checked during the second round with Space Station, and it seemed all the haters were right. They just weren't that winter major winning team. Down three to one, it was do or die. As G2 inching ever closer to bringing this all the way back to Champions Field, it started with Atomic, and then the Knapsack, bringing it down <laughs> to earth. And how great is it to see him still having a strong performance? Oh, I mean, yes. I, I think, oh, yes. I think missing that spring major kind of gave him the mental reset he needed. <laughs> Five goals from Atomic after he had kind of a slower start to the series. He has come alive. Four straight, or four goals recently for G2 Esports, including the hat trick here that puts G2 and Space Station onto Champions League. Pass two, he needs to get this one center quickly, but Atomic was up so quickly, no one was able to touch the ball. Arsenal's shot will be blocked out by Chicago. Arsenal got the bump, and Hotzer will score! It's gonna be SSG, who not only break out of the G2 pressure, but now put them under the clock. Chance to equalize! Chicago's got it! Oh, we have overtime! Next goal wins! So much danger there from Space Station Gaming. LJ had to be perfect, but they're not done yet! JNF! The East strikes! And G2 take it at seven! Rumors of his downfall have been greatly exaggerated. There is no single player more motivated to get back on the main stage in this giant arena and play for another shot at the title than Jacob Knappman, and he's just done it again. Another clutch goal, his fifth goal of the series, and he leads G2 back from the brink and to a 2-0 start. It cannot be overstated how important that felt for G2. After a full year of only coming close, it looked like this was going to be their return to the top. It wasn't time to feel any relief yet, though, as a date with the number one seed from the wild card was going to be their next challenge. Complexity had been a nuisance all season, and had even surpassed G2 to get the third seed in NA during the final split of the season. Regardless of the result, we were guaranteed a battle. Nothing personal. This is so split in my mind, R right down the middle. This is 50-50. Uh, we say the phrase a lot, it, you know, it's a coin toss. You never know, heads, tails, ooh, but this... <laughs> This 100% can go either direction. In my mind, the first two games are the most important. Atomic said that if they start out strong against Complexity, they should take it. And for that reason, I think Complexity are actually going oh, to win. Really? I don't think they have a good start again. I okay. think they're too slow at the beginning, beginning of every series. It's going to be the same as SSG, and this time, they're not going to get back in the series. Okay. Showing throughout the entire season, realistically, they just had to go a little bit towards that Spring Major side of things. 
They've not put in the work versus G2 that G2 have clearly put in to raise themselves up. And what a performance overall from G2. I am not worried about complexity going through regardless. They are not out, bear in mind, we are in Swiss. It, they've just gone two and one. They now play another two and one team tomorrow. Yeah, they've got two more chances to make it through to the main event. But today is all about G2 Esports. They have been absolutely phenomenal in this group stage. Have not put a foot wrong. And who else but Mr. Reed, Mr. Chicago Stumpy, taking us for an interview. Drasty, let's see what Chicago has to say. With a sweep against the top seed, G2 was headed to the main event, and the knapsack was so back. Let's be real though, he never truly leaves. Finishing the wildcard averaging an entire goal per game with a rating of 1.17, he was firmly a top three player in the tournament. Teammate Atomic was one of the only players to one-up him, with a 1.38 rating of his own. Atomic had also had a relatively weak year compared to the last, but with him and JNAPS clicking on offense, things were looking good. Their group stage run would start with a dominant win over Rule 1. It sprung him downfield. It leaves Chicago as the lone man back to try and defend the beat. He could get this. And he got the ground pitch and JNAPS will score the other way. Before G2 would take their first loss of the tournament to fall major champions Gen G. Going into their match with Moist, the entire season was on the line. Out of every European team, Moist was the one most intertwined with the G2 roster. Both teams went into the year with incredible expectations, but had been coming up just short. A win here, and you finish the season as top eight in the entire world, while a loss means all the work you've put in during the last ten months was a failure. And to add to the stakes, JNAPS had something to say. My name is Jacob, also known as JNAPS, and I'm from Halifax, Nova Scotia. I'm 23, and I'm here to play in Dusseldorf at the World Championship. It was around high school when I started playing Rocket League, and the very first time I realized, like, oh, I could actually do this for money, even though it's small, was there were these tournaments called Mock It. I remember, like, just screaming down to my mom and my brother when I was, like, I must have been, like, 15 or something. Like, I made $75 today or something, and just being really proud. I think my brother was like really, he was like really supportive of me because he tried to do it with another game, Call of Duty, when he was like really young. And I think he saw like me doing it as he was like passing down the torch. I think at the end of the day, what I really care about if we win or lose is like the pride that I feel and like the legacy I leave behind as a pro player in Rocket League. There's like a stigma in Rocket League where the older players are kind of fall off and I think Nowadays, at these tournaments, I just want to prove that it's not always the case. And this year, if I like were to describe it, it's just been us kind of coasting. And I think also I had like some personal things happen. And in Nova Scotia, there was a wildfire and my house unfortunately got burned down during the, it was before the last regional. It was on the weekend. I'm not sure which day, but I was watching the EU regional at the time and my brother he sleeps in the basement, so his whole room's down there. And he came upstairs to me, like, saying, like, did you hear about this fire? That's, it was like five minutes, 10 minutes down the road. And we got with our neighbors and there was just a, like, massive, it was like half the sky was covered in smoke and ash. And we were just kind of talking with our, our neighbor. And he was saying, like, pack a bag, like, as soon as possible, because it was a really dry day. And the fire was like, it was spreading quick. So we packed a bag, which was just clothes, like for two days. And we got all the animals in our car and evacuated, honestly thinking we'd be there in like four hours, like going back home, just because every wildfire that we've ever experienced got contained really quick. And that next morning, one of our like good friends sent us like a Facebook post that basically showed our street. And it was like a street view of, Every single house on our street was burned down. And then me, my mom, my brother were just like hugging and crying basically. Cause we've lived, I've lived there my whole life. So everything I ever owned was in that house. All the memories and everything. We had four or two cats, two dogs in like a small cottage. And one of the cats that I sent the photo of, we lost him on the first day of the fire. Cause he's like a very outdoor cat. So nine days later after the fire, we got a message like saying, we got your cat because they were putting traps down. And that is that picture of me, my mom and the, the cat that I'm holding. 
very happy moment when we heard the news that they found him. It was at like 11 at night or something. My mom started screaming. It definitely changes how your brain operates, especially seeing like firsthand how fast the fire was spreading and how it could have gone bad. And honestly, at the end of the day, we lost our house, but everything was fine. The family was fine. Our pets were fine. And I think the biggest thing that I took away from it was the support from friends, family, and the Rocket League community too. Like everyone around me and my mom's life, my brother's life, like everyone came together and helped us in some way, like w whether it was money or just food and like toiletries after everything got burned down. I think that was like the biggest thing that I took away was how much support we have. I think when I do have those feelings of self-doubt or just like wanting to retire as a pro Rocket League player, I think the number one motivator would be my dad. My dad is always just like pushing me to keep going and and I think this year has been like tough for all three of us. We've had some some problems like that, but even though the ups and downs have been happening this season, this is the most important tournament of the year and giving 100% effort is like a necessity. I think maybe I would say to my old self like this is basically what you dreamed of doing, so don't like take advantage of it and realize like the position you're in cuz you are very lucky to play a video game for a living professionally and at the highest level I think sometimes it can be hard and I would want to quit while being a pro but just realizing how much work I put in to be here and how many other people would want to be in my position I think just being um grateful for everything if that got you feeling emotional, just wait for Papa Naps to make you shed a tear. Right now, I'd like to pull one of those parents here that are here celebrating as one of their as their kid tries to achieve victory. I welcome Papa Naps. Uh, how you uh, how you feel to us? This is a uh, this is good. It's a good event so far. This has been an awesome event. The fans are crazy here. It has been. Now, uh, you, I saw the rest of the family here. Who else is here to celebrate? Yep. So I have my sister Wanda here and. Uh, Jay Naps' girlfriend, Reagan's here. Back home, we have my wife, Heather, my son, Jeff, and Jay Naps' biggest fan, his 89-year-old grandmother. He never misses one of his games. That's incredible. Shout out to Grandma. Now, uh, obviously, before this, we saw uh, a little bit of a, a video there talking about it. The family's been through some rough times right now. And I just want to know how family and Jane Ops talked about it, how you realized everyone is there for each other. How has family, teammates in the community been able to help you guys get through a lot of that? We've had a real rough summer. Uh, Jake lost his host. He lost his grandfather. The Rocket League community, you wouldn't believe the amount of private messages I got saying, is there something that we can do for you? It's incredible. It's a big family. Shout out to you guys. And one more thing, they're about to go out there, big match for them. I'm curious if there's anything you'd like to say to Jane Ash before he goes out and performs on the big stage. Regardless of what happens today, buddy, I love you and I'm proud. It's so rare to see an entire 10-month season come down to a clearly defined single series, but that's what was about to happen between G2 and Moist, and Rocket League was tugging at all the heartstrings. Welcome to a moment in history. Nobody wants to see either story end, but there is only one more spot in the playoffs. It's time. The gatekeepers have defended so many teams in their dreams. They have denied everyone over and over yet no matter the adversity moist has always found a way it's the old versus the new moist versus g2 for championship sunday only one of them will be able to reach our top eight juicy already looking for a tonic oh. and moist strike first perfect yeah both teams giving each other a lot of respect right now shogun they're not they're not anticipating misses but oh that's a great shot chicago 
Waits and double tap past two defenders. And juicy, had to. Out to the backboard. Joyo pops up, not bumped by JNAPS. This now means Joyo can do what he does best off the backboard! Oh. Double tap on the dunk! Goes wrong, the domino effect does tend to go into play. Yesterday does an awful lot to try and get rid of that. At as Joyo now down, in comes Juicy. Gonna have to place it well. Ooh, and he's done so. With the one goal lead, G2 needs to find the ball. It's the chance there. Tomic goes in field. He's 1v1. And he's got some help. It's the Tomic. Who do take us to overtime. Joyo. Joyo denied the back corner double by Atomic, who just finds himself everywhere that the ball goes. And he's exactly where G2 need him. Much more tentative here in game number two. Waiting to see who can get the first chance. <laughs> Juicy had a little bit of a stutter and it almost caught him. Instead, it was perfect. Now Joyo chases down Atomic. How do you like it, Atomic? Where we go for oh. that? Temple. None of the mistakes of yesterday. G2 trying to force one right here. And they've done it. Joyo now off the ceiling. Two back into this. And they have JNAPS downfield. And they are going to get it to him. <laughs> get even a chance here wow and g2 esports yet again bounce back with the reads from g2 on point off the backboard who's there first joyo gets the save now another one chicago oh. scores and not a lot of time left for moist another scoreless game it might be g2's the other way atomic going all the way himself he doesn't need a center ball g2 esports have got one two Three match points. But Chicago's able to do great trade by him. Low challenge, second one out to Juicy. Atomic saves, next one up, off the backboard. Oops. Bump on Juicy means that he cannot follow up. JNAPS, he goes for next! Too good. It is all about the result. And this result for G2 is one of the ones that is legacy defining. The way they have played this against a team that has looked good on land yeah. is incredible and would set them up as one of the tournament contenders oh, oh. Chicago he doesn't want to be a contender you're not going to save Chicago from that position is Joyo going to get one back yes he is it's still alive Juicy only has Picard for Chicago who drops wow. the ball down G2 flawless now you bring up the practice the dedication the hours played in the game but not a lot of people are also aware that camaraderie goes a long way for teammates as well. Talk to me a little bit about what the friendship is like between you three players and how it translates onto the pitch. I think all of us, we've been together for so long and I think we all know how dedicated each other are and through all the ups and downs, I think it finally, when we get that sweet win, it just feels so good. So I think all of us just want to win so bad and for each other at the same time. The season was no longer a failure for G2. They would go out to eventual runner-up BDS, but they did at least finish as the top team from North America. Still, this was not the season that had been envisioned after 2022, and hard conversations had to happen. The result? Chicago was released from the team. This documentary is being released at yet another very turbulent time in the team's history, after being teammates for five years winning Season 9 and the Winter Major, JNAPS hasn't even written a goodbye tweet for his former teammate after several days. And no, it's not because things ended on bad terms, it's because JNAPS may be leaving with him. As of now, G2 has committed to building around Atomic, who may or may not be keeping JNAPS on the team. This would be a nearly unprecedented move for G2, who only did a similar thing when Crow brought on Rizzo and JNAPS over six full years ago in Season 3. Currently, all we know for certain is JNAPS' 11th season is going to be looking a little different in regards to his retirement, in case you're wondering about that. As of just one month ago, he would say, What would be the thing that makes you consider it? I don't know if there would necessarily be one thing, but maybe just like, honestly, if COVID happened again, that would be the one thing. <laughs> Just online tournaments only, but mm. so lands maybe, what keeps you not making lands consistently mm. would be the catalyst. But honestly, who knows what the future will hold? Regardless, Jay Naps has had one of the greatest Rocket League careers ever. Three-time champion with victories spanning over five years, the greatest NA player of all time, the face of G2 Rocket League, nearly seven full years at the top, and most importantly, 
a great role model. Whatever the future holds for Jacob Knapman, we can be sure of just one thing. It'll be great.